to order. It is Monday, July 26 at 7 p.m. Uh, Ms. Davis may have a roll call of the South Orange Governing Body along with the Maplewood Township Committee. Yes, the Village President Column. Here. Trustee Brown. Here. Trustee Collier. Here. Trustee Haskins. Here. Trustee Hilton. Here. Trustee Jones. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Daffis. Present. Mr. DeLuca. Here. Mr. Limbridge. Here. And Mayor McGee. Here. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we are thrilled to have uh, members of our South Orange and Maplewood communities along with other stakeholders from our respective fire departments in the state uh, FMBA. Uh, we are gonna kick off right now, first starting uh, with some special guests that we have. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, New Jersey's shared service czars, perhaps the most impressive title I've ever heard in the history of ever. I think we should we all have be Nick Platt and Jordan Glatt joining us. Um, Mr. Platt, would you like to please take it away? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Can you hear? Susie? Just make sure when the red is up, you're live. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's um, good evening, everyone. Um, how did we get here? Um, in 2017, then candidate um, Phil Murphy was in his final debate. And the a newspaper reporter said, um, candidate Murphy, how do you expect to solve New Jersey's crippling property tax crisis? And Phil Murphy said, I am going to appoint some czars and we are gonna be doing shared services because that is the way out of this mess. Um, in May of 2018, um, he did what he said he was going to do, and um, Mayor Glatt and I were appointed to be the two first shared property or shared service czars. Um, and this uh, consolidation was the first meeting we attended in 2018. We came um, to the village and we, um, we sat and listened, and it has been a long time in coming, and, and, and I really congratulate everybody here um, um, that's at the dais and, and in the audience. Um, at that press conference where um, we were introduced, um, we quipped to the governor that history has not been kind to czars, they always die painfully. Um, when on the way back from East Rutherford, we decided now, you know, it's a big state, how are we going to do it? Um, we have 565 municipalities, <coughs> both of us were mayors, and we understood the complexities of doing shared services. We also had some time in our tenure done some reports and consolidation studies, <coughs> and depending upon our political will and courage was a determining factor of whether we pulled that study out of the draw and waved it in front of our constituents and said, this is the path forward. Now, I just want to focus on this, um, this consolidation. Um, we, thousands of hours have been spent doing this. Um, the I really want to thank a, a couple of people. First is the governor um, of this great state, uh, Governor Murphy, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, uh, my colleague Jordan Glatt, the Department of Local Government Services, um, Director uh, Jacqueline Suarez, uh, Rick Riccadelli, Chris Rass, Eileen Brennan, and Patty Coburn. All of them from the DCA have been involved in these studies and, and putting this all together. Um, the governor has been very interested in what we're doing here tonight. Um, and I think this is a major step forward. And in fact, we all know, um, everyone who is in, in a, a taxpayer in the state knows that police and fire are um, very expensive in municipalities. And this could very easily be the template going forward for other uh, municipalities in the state, and I thank you. Good evening. So, um, 
a little bit about me. I'm the former mayor of. Uh, you want a little closer to the mic. I'm the former mayor of uh, Summit, New Jersey, obviously. <laughs> but more importantly, I grew up in here in South Orange, up on Ravine Drive, went to Columbia High School. So it's nice to be back home. <laughs> it's kind of ha it's funny how the world uh, comes full circle for you. Um, when we started this, um, we really didn't have a lot to work with from the state. And um, I, I joked around quite a bit saying, yeah, we have a l some tools in our toolbox, but the one tool we don't have, we can't give elected officials is courage. And I really just want to congratulate you all for having the courage to do this, because I know it's not easy. Um, and as the program develops, we started with uh, basically no budget, like $40,000. 47. 47, <laughs> to get some assistance. Um, and we're at now we're getting about $10 million each year to work with communities uh, as they approach shared services. I just want to outline some of those uh, things that are available. Um, there is challenge grant that is $150,000 per county that the com a community can apply for. So in this case, both Maplewood and South Orange could ap apply for that out of Essex County. Uh, there's implementation grants of $250,000 per community. And again, both <coughs> towns can apply for that. Implementation, we, need th we mean things like new uniforms, in this case maybe uh, re-decaling the trucks, all those kind of soft costs that kind of catch you by surprise. And then there's also at the county level, uh, each county is awarded $50,000 for a county coordinator to try and spur shared services uh, within the county, kind of be the arbitrator, if you will, and look for um, shared service among the towns. Also, uh, the local assistance bureau will provide uh, studies of no for no charge, as long as both towns have agreed that they want to pursue a shared service. Um, they will work with engaging the stakeholders, such as the reason Nick and I are here tonight, uh, with the communities, and then offering recommendations along the way to help streamline the government functions. We've put through about 2,000 shared services already since we've been appointed. Some are a lot smaller than this. Uh, this would be one of the larger ones that we've been working on. Uh, to date, it's been about 60? 74 million. 74 million dollars worth of savings along the way. Um, An analysis done by Moody's Investor Services on, on comparing how we've, how we've done since the inception of 2018. And I just want to leave you all with one point is we do not go into a town and kind of try and insist on a shared service. We, we Nick and I are both uh, we're mayors, and we know what it would be like to have somebody from the outside to tell Mr. you. Mr. Glad, if I can interrupt you, um, to our IT team in the back, we are getting some notices from residents that they cannot hear uh, the audio over the television broadcast. <coughs> Do you have a timeline? of when you think it will be restored? So I'll just, I'll just continue on. on. And <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
All right, so we'll continue on, and we are also live streaming on social media, too, so anything that's not captured here, we will direct residents to that feed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. So I'm I sorry, just Mr. really just want to close with saying that we do not come into a town and say you ought to or you have to do a shared service. We're here for when the towns come to us and they need help or want help to achieve it. Uh, again, far be it for us to tell a mayor or a governing body how to run their own community. And we usually ask, well, we always ask for a resolution to be passed ahead of time before we come into it, before we ride into a town. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Um, if you can hand the clicker over, or actually, um, and Jordan, one of the things on the next slide is uh, from our partners at the De Department of Community Affairs. Um, I know you kind of gave a high level overview of this is that we've been working both with the DCA and, and LAB, which is the Local Assistance Bureau. I, I think you gave um, a, a pretty good overview, but the coordination between the governor's office and under the lieutenant governor in the Department of Community Affairs, we appreciate. Uh, the coordination, the money that's available, and probably we'll add in there for implementation. South Orange and Maplewood are fully prepared uh, to take advantage of the implementation, which I think maxes out at a quarter of a million dollars if the governing bodies choose to proceed forward. All right, thank you. So if we can hand the clicker in this direction, um, I am now going to turn it over to... I don't know who has I have it. You... He already has, has a clicker. Has a click. So you're faster than me. All right, uh, it's everyone. It's like the talking uh, stick. I'd like to welcome uh, <laughs> my, my partner in crime, uh, certainly dear friend and colleague, uh, Maplewood Mayor Frank McGeehy. Thank you, Village President. And thank you to the DCA for all their efforts. Uh, thank you to our, our czars, Platt and Glatt. It's been really great working with you both, and we'll continue to work together. And thank you for all your efforts. This conversation of creating a shared service fire department is nothing new to our community. In fact, I am the fourth mayor who has attempted in some capacity to move forward with this process. Jerry Ryan, Fred Perfetta, Vic DeLuca, and now myself. The opportunity to establish another shared service that will align our sister town of South Orange is a natural fit. We will have the ability to leverage an already established blueprint of a shared services partnership inclusive of our courts. We are in the process of exploring and moving forward with the robust recycling zero waste program, which we just highlighted in another town hall a week ago. This shared service program will provide tax savings to our hardworking residents of our community, and you will hear more about that later this evening. The plan provides balance, and although the process is not done, we have worked and collaborated for years to bring us to this moment tonight. In 2016, an exploratory committee was formed and it was decided to obtain a third party expert. In the beginning of 2017, our municipalities developed a RFP to identify a consultant to do the due diligence and provide recommendations. After a vigorous review, Manitou was selected. Manitou provided the research, the analysis, and evaluation required and needed to create a construct, which is documented in this report with the latest updated provided to the public five weeks ago, and which we will hear more about tonight. The original report itself was provided to the municipalities in 2017. The principal of Manitou is Dr. Charles Jennings. Dr. Jennings comes to us with over 20 years of fire service experience. Also important is that Dr. Jennings holds a chief fire officer designation. Dr. Jennings' work throughout his career has been recognized by several organizations. From the Natural Fire Protection Association's High Rise Building Safety Advisory Committee to the Institute of Fire Engineers. The scope of work which Manitou was tasked with evaluating was as follows. Improved effectiveness response time. Imp increased efficiency. Improved productivity and customer service. Enhanced or expanded services. Cost savings. Improved allocation utilization of services 
including people power, facilities, and equipment. Cost avoidances. Coordination and improved efficiencies in mutual aid. Standardization of services and programs. Improved and more efficient training. Opportunities to improve our ISO ratings and additional funding sources, including future state and federal grant funding. To meet these expectations for scope of work required, several tasks were executed and achieved along the way, including, but not limited to, assessment of current independent operations, analysis, evaluation, and recommendations as to the opportunities for improved efficiencies through merger, consolidation of shared personnel, equipment, facilities, and or services. And of course, tonight, public presentations and results of studies. I want to take a second to recognize our Maplewood Fire Department colleagues. I want to recognize the leadership of the FMBA, Mr. Kevin Herbert. I would like to recognize our former chief, Michael Weber, and our current acting chief, Chris Armiano. All these men and all the firemen of Maplewood's department have been professional and been very collaborative. And I personally want to thank you all. And for you who are there tonight, thank you as well. I also want to thank my colleagues for their support and input throughout this entire process. As previously mentioned, because of the process of getting us to a shared service is a long road. In November of 2020, we invited Manitou back to update the original report with the focus on assessing significant changes. The report that we will present tonight covers three additional years of data and other important recommendations related to combining our departments. I would now like to introduce and yield the floor to Dr. Charles Jennings. Dr. Jennings. Okay, thank you. So just a word uh, before we uh, dive in here. Manitou has been in business since 1999. Um, prior to that, I consulted independently uh, for eight years. And prior to that, I worked for, at the time, the leading uh, consulting firm in the, in the industry. And so this brings considerable uh, experience working in consulting in fire and emergency services uh, across 20 states, uh, three Canadian provinces, and, um, and being involved in, in all dimensions of uh, uh, fire service management, uh, both operationally and from a consulting standpoint. And so what I intend to do right now is just to run through kind of the highlights uh, of the study. Uh, first thing is that the, the two communities, Maplewood and South Orange, are, are very similarly matched. Um, as you see there, some statistics, uh, South Orange, just under three square miles. 16,500 odd uh, resident population, approximately 71% owner-occupied housing. And uh, obviously a, a, a fairly benign uh, fire risk uh, environment. There's still, of course, uh, target hazards and uh, properties of concern, but uh, a very favorable fire, fire picture. The uh, table of organization currently for the South Orange Fire Department, as you see here, consists of four shifts. Uh, there was only one uh, non-shift person, which is the fire chief. Uh, each shift is overseen by a deputy chief. And the full staffing for the shift is uh, two captains and five firefighters, or a total of eight personnel. Uh, uh, a sign that the department will run with uh, a minimum of six personnel. The workload for the South Orange Fire Department, as you can see here um, from the previous study, uh, was right around 1,700, 1,750 average calls per year. There's been an increase in 2018 and 2019. Uh, and the department is now approaching uh, uh, 2,500 incidents annually. Uh, this gives a, a detailed breakdown of incidents by type. And um, before your eyes glaze over, I think there's a few things just to uh, bear in mind. If you look at the line if, on, on service calls, that's the heading five, uh, those are uh, those have gone up, as have a special event, the category number nine. Uh, if you look at the other uh, categories, they've tended to be fairly steady, which is, which is what we normally see 
from uh, community to community. Uh, those uh, service calls and special events are, uh, tend to be uh, non-emergency type incidents, uh, lockouts, uh, public assistance, uh, or special events, uh, weather, and the like. Uh, just looking at the same data now on a, a pie chart, we see that the predominant, uh, is this a pointer on here? I don't want to press the button just yeah. in case. Okay. Um, the big, big slice of pie is uh, service calls, uh, and we go around there at the top, uh, you'll see structure fires are 7% um, of, uh, of the incidents. Moving on to Maplewood, we see it's uh, 3.8, roughly 3.9 square miles, a slightly larger, a slightly larger resident population of 24,700. Uh, Owner-occupied housing, 68.6 uh, .6 versus 71 percent, so very similar from that uh, standpoint as well. And obviously, that's not news to anyone here uh, in the, either of the two communities. Um, and we have a long history of uh, partnership and uh, cooperative delivery of services. Uh, so the combined population of the two communities is uh, 41,300 and change. The Maplewood Fire Department uh, table of organization, uh, it's Somewhat similar to South Orange, it has four shifts, each headed by a deputy chief, um, and uh, one or two captains, depending on the shift, and seven or eight firefighters for a total of 10 personnel assigned per shift with an eight-person uh, minimum on duty. Uh, in addition to the fire chief, uh, there is a full-time administrative assistant. Uh, there's a deputy chief who serves as an executive officer who takes on a number of administrative uh, responsibilities. And they have a, a fire prevention bureau in which a, a captain, um, a uniformed captain uh, is an inspector. Also, they have a, a civilian inspector in that, uh, in that function. In South Orange, those uh, responsibilities are performed by on-duty personnel. Uh, calls for service. Um, we see that there was a, a, a slight downward trend from 2018 to 2019. Uh, and, and a, a higher number of incidents in the 3,800, 3,700 range. Uh, that's primarily due to the fact that uh, Maplewood provides uh, EMS transport. They operate an ambulance. And so if we look at this uh, pie chart, again, where we saw service calls dominated in South Orange, we see that uh, medical and rescue calls are 56% of the workload for the uh, Maplewood Fire Department. Uh, Structure fires, 2%, uh, but again, the percentages can be misleading because of the larger overall number of incidents. Again, looking at the detailed breakout, uh, we see here uh, uh, actually a smaller number of reported fires. Uh, other categories are fairly consistent year over year. And, and we can discuss that uh, later, perhaps, uh, some of the issues in terms of uh, statistics and record keeping uh, with regard to uh, inter-community comparisons. So what does all this mean? Well, there's certainly a lot more involved in the analysis and, and you're encouraged to uh, download and read the reports. Uh, but the bottom line uh, here is that uh, our, our opinion, uh, our findings, our expertise leads us to remain enthusiastic at the potential for both agencies to merge which will create a higher level of service for both communities and enhance the number of personnel available on initial alarms. And so let's go through uh, what that means uh, in terms of specific benefits or advantages. So first, uh, and I think most importantly, uh, we will consistently, by using the resources of both agencies working together, uh, they will consistently increase staffing assigned to reported structure fire incidents uh, this will increase the uh, response complement from the current six to eight personnel in South Orange and eight to 10 in Maplewood to 14 to 17 personnel per tour in a single department, which brings the, uh, the, the combined agency into a better position with regard to compliance with National Fire Protection, Protection Association Standard 1710. Um, and a word about NFPA 1710. NFPA 1710. Uh, is a uh, consensus standard. It's, it's uh, developed by a committee that's supposed to be balanced between uh, various interest groups, and it's uh, put together uh, into a document. The, I don't know how many times it's been revised. The latest edition just came out a few months ago. Uh, 
that standard has a long history, uh, but it should be borne in mind that the standard is in no way mandatory. The standard is only has a power um, if it's uh, adopted by the authority having jurisdiction. Um, uh, in that case, uh, you know, it would be uh, considered uh, like a local ordinance. Uh, however, that is not the case in, in South Orange or Maplewood, nor is it the case in the vast majority of municipalities uh, across the United States. Uh, there is, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that aside. We'll keep going. So, uh, but nonetheless, I think uh, everyone, I certainly uh, endorse the notion of uh, a complement of personnel going to a reported structure fire of 14 to 17 people, uh, and by fulfilling the, this and using those resources jointly, uh, the combined agency will be able to achieve that. What does that mean, aside from just putting more people out on the street faster? Uh, that means that they get to the scene faster and they are able to provide a more effective initial attack. Uh, to suppress the fire and make rescues. Uh, this enhances safety, not only for the public, but for the responding firefighters because they have more personnel on scene, they're able to have personnel available in readiness should someone get into difficulty at the uh, incipient stages or early stages of a fire, there are people there to go in and rescue the rescuer. Uh, fourth, it improves current response times by keeping all equipment and apparatus, oh, thank you. Uh, and keeps all uh, equipment and apparatus in service by providing immediate response from the closest station. Now, these two departments, they lay right alongside each other, uh, but there are indeed areas in South Orange where Maplewood can get there faster and likewise, and that's not unique to this, uh, this community. Uh, it improves administration, training, and efficiency by using best practices from both agencies, and having been an agency administrator and an acting fire chief, uh, at some point, if you have infrastructure and programs in place, whether you do them for 20 people or 50 people, it's, it's not much more work. Uh, and so by leveraging that, you're going to be able to uh, be more efficient with your administration and uh, training programs. It makes no reductions in firefighter line personnel and achieves taxpayer savings through the reduction of redundant management and supervision positions, specifically one fire chief and four deputy chiefs, which will bring the current combined department from 76 to 71 personnel. All those changes in personnel will be done through attrition. Uh, and lastly, uh, it unifies dispatch for safer, more effective operations. Until uh, several months ago, uh, the two fire departments had separate dispatch operations. Which is, which is not ideal in terms of being able to uh, foster coordination. And so in closing, I just would, would bring to mind these two maps. Uh, these are the communities of Maplewood and South Orange uh, showing the fire stations. Uh, South Orange is stationed on the top, Maplewood's headquarters, and station number two below. Uh, in spite of whatever you may hear, uh, we have to keep in mind that we essentially, all we're doing is going from the situation on the right map to the situation on the left. And that imaginary dividing line between the two municipalities disappears. And we then leverage and utilize the combined resources that you're already there in the most efficient and effective way to provide the best service to the public. And so, in spite uh, of all that we're, we're doing here is uh, improving service, uh, using those services uh, to the benefit of both communities. And, and in my long service as a consultant, uh, this is a clear win. Uh, we have two communities uh, that have a history of working together. Uh, you have no loss of on-duty resources or apparatus. Um, and. Uh, and you have all the benefits accruing, uh, as we talked about before, reduction of uh, duplication of management, and everything else is enhanced. So uh, that concludes my uh, remarks on the technical aspects of the study. Thank you very much, Mr. Jennings. Is the microphone working? Stephen, can you hear me back there? It doesn't seem like I'm getting audio. Am 
I have never been accused of being soft-spoken. All right, there we go. That sounds a little bit more like Sheena. All right, so we are moving into uh, the cost savings and uh, cost avoidances. Uh, this is optimizing fire service costs for both the South Orange and Maplewood taxpayers. Um, earlier in the presentation, you heard Mr. Glatt talk about uh, one of the slides where the Department of Community Affairs noted that we are at an all-time high in the state of New Jersey. In 2020, the average property tax bill went above $9,000 uh, for the state of New Jersey, an all-time high. Now, for those of you who live in South Orange and Maplewood, you realize that is nearly half the amount of money that we pay in property taxes. In South Orange, it's north of $19,000 in property taxes, and the township of Maplewood is approaching $17,000. So it is absolutely important that as we talk about the largest line items in a municipal budget, again, recognizing that schools are around 57%, counties around 16%, we're about 27%, etc., is that the things that we can control at the municipal level, if we were to create a hierarchy is that police and fire, of course, public safety will always be the most important, but optimized and the efficiencies along with the tax savings are the greatest complement that we can have together. I will note that I have not made this presentation. I already did Sheena numbers. I believe it was called voodoo math at some point. Uh, so we need our partners at the Department of Community Affairs and their technical assistance team to come in and run the numbers for us. So what I am presenting tonight in their stead is the numbers that they wanted to share with the South Orange and Maplewood community based on the findings of moving our departments, <coughs> respectively, from 76 to 71. So the first thing is to understand what assumptions were put into place. Police and fire both are very complicated structures. Things are moving within collective bargaining <coughs> agreements. People are stepping. Um, there are retirements that you have to consider. You have to make a lot of assumptions because you can only get something at a screenshot in time before things move, whether that's a retirement, a new hire. It is very, very cyclical. So these are the assumptions that went into a presentation regarding what the cost savings would be to the average taxpayer. First on the personnel front, exactly what was described is that this is based on combining uh, a combined department of 71. That is one chief, five deputy chiefs, 16 captains, and 40, oh, I'm sorry, it is 48 firefighters and 17 captains. I think I have the wrong uh, presentation pulled up. So again, that is a reduction of one chief from two departments and four deputy chiefs. Um, next, the number provided to the DCA was based on collective bargaining agreements already in place. We did not make any averages or assumptions. We took all the personnel that we had, we filled out our tables of organization, because I'll acknowledge that even in South Orange, sorry, I should uh, move this forward, is that we are down some headcount that we hope to get to our full table of organization, which is 33. All those individual numbers were turned over, and I will say that these are conservative budget figures because in order for the DCA to run an assessment, we selected the higher of the two. In some certain ranks between South Orange and Maplewood, one department is higher. When it comes to health care costs, one department is higher. So when I say the numbers are conservative, it is because this was premised on using the higher of the two numbers to see what that number would be like, recognizing that it could potentially be more. But again, this is an assumption. All in costs. One of the things that um, I was a little critical of, and it was no fault of his own, was Mr. Jennings used salary and wages in his original report uh, that was issued in fall of 2017. Those assumptions were based on numbers provided for salary and wages, which, as we submit to the state in the state budget form, is that you note salary and wages and operating expenses. But for those of us in government, as elected officials, we realize that there are um, expenses in other parts of the state budget that relate to health care costs or pension costs or our FICAR costs, et cetera, that aren't seen in the salary and wage line items. So when we talk about all-in costs, it's all-inclusive of positions and not limited to just one aspect of a personnel expense. Um, next, attrition, is that it's really tough to figure out exactly when you get to 71. So we assumed a benchmark of 25 years, which historically we have seen as an average, is that right around that point in time, uh, the men and women of fire services will let us know that they are considering retirement. So that is, again, an assumption. So when we hit full optimization of our proposed number of 71, it could come sooner or it could come later. But just know that that was the benchmark that we used to derive some of these findings. Lastly, uh, when we get into the not covered category, this does not impact our operational budget, 
potential savings um, between the two towns. Um, South Orange has increased theirs. Maplewood has had a steady flow. They also have revenue from EMS, et cetera. We have not done that analysis. That would be done under the new joint meeting structure. It also does not look at overtime because, again, when you've had understaffing for a while, it will um, artificially inflate overtime in a way that necessarily isn't indicative when you are at full uh, staffing. And last but not least, capital savings, which we'll discuss a little bit later, but we are not talking about headquarters, our trucks, our engines, our rescue vehicles, et cetera. We are focusing just on personnel right now and what that would look like. Next, I wanted to give a little sample of what this looks like when we talk about all-in costs. Again, this is a hypothetical situation. We base these numbers off of 2020 data regarding two retirements we recently have, uh, had. First is the fire chief and a deputy fire chief. So we talked about the base salary. Again, that is the base. That is what you see in the state form. Then there are normally in contractu contractually um, agreed upon terms, longevity, not always, but in sometimes, it is included in both South Orange and Maplewood, pension contributions, the medical that we offer, FICA, any type of necessary stipends for us in South Orange, we do that for inspectors, holiday pay, and uniform allowances. So the title of fire chief, again, using 2020 figures, the all-in cost, as we previously discussed, was $271,263, uh, $271, and 18 cents. And then at the deputy chief title, uh, the total was roughly $225,000. Um, when we talk about co costs also, I just want people to understand how our tours work. Um, the South Orange and Maplewood tour structures is basically we follow what most towns do, which is 24 hours on, 72 off. So you work one day, you have the next three days off, you come back. Um, what are minimums when we talk about minimums? You heard a few times from uh, previous presenters, South Orange staffs at eight with a minimum of six. What that means is we hope to hire that each tour or pl platoon has uh, no less than eight firefighters, but when somebody is on vacation or they're sick or there's disability going on, is that we can go as low as six, which is an ideal, before we compel overtime. As soon as we drop below six and we only have five, five firefighters on a tour, we will push that number back to six. Overtime is typically, um, it is typically in, in the bargaining agreements that we have with our locals. What you'll normally see is a minimum number of hours and something such as time and a half. So somebody who would normally have a base salary of $100 will be paid for $150 and would come either in four hours or six hours or what has been agreed upon. But those are the numbers that we're looking at for the five positions that we're going to be discussing. What this looks like visually and I thought this was important, is that this is our total table of organization and what is being proposed. So when we said no reduction in line personnel, we have a reduction of one chief. I, I think it's weird to have one department with two chiefs, so it would be one chief's position. Uh, right now we have nine deputy chiefs. Now that's interesting because we talked about having four tours and four tours, but in the staff administrative role, Maplewood currently has a executive officer, which is the right arm to the fire chief. From the South Orange perspective, we don't have that. So our contribution will be our percentage of contributing to a role that we think are, is going to be very valuable to the table of organization. Where you see these gray folks, this is, again, the position and the title that we propose eliminating. Right now, as described in Maplewood, they run four tours or platoons or shifts, however you want to describe it. Remember, 24 hours on, 72 off. And the same is true for South Orange. This is typical. We have four tours, platoons, tours. Um, it, it literally is one off, three days off. So combined, separately, as we operate today, we have eight. We have eight. When we combine, if we combine, there will only be four tours. In our assessment, you do not need to have two deputy chiefs per tour. Uh, for those of you who don't know the role of the deputy chief, that is your incident commander. That is the person who is not on a rig, such as a captain, a company, the firefighters who are actually in the trucks, in the engines, et cetera, in an ideal situation. They are the supervisors of that tour, and they are going out in their command vehicle to do an assessment and to organize, whether it be the mutual aid, the automatic aid, and overseeing all the companies that are there. So that is their role, and that is why we are proposing that reduction. And you will find in any major city, et cetera, is that that 24 on, 72 off is very much typical. What this looks like in total savings for us, 
again, in the analysis that was conducted by the Department of Community Affairs, based on that 25-year benchmark that I told you, again, it could be 2022, we realize full attrition, it could be 2025, 2026, we never like to presume when somebody is retiring, but we want to at least make a fair estimate. This is based on the first line being the staffing at the status quo level of 76. As you can see in 2020, uh, that was the benchmark data of roughly $11 million. In 2021, $11.5 million. 2022, $11.9, close to $12 million. And then in 2023, a little north of $12 million. This is combined, reiterating, we are using the all-in figures, not just salary and wages, the all-in figures, subtracting any type of overtime expenses, et cetera. Staffing at 71, this is the proposed consolidation uh, that the both governing bodies are considering. In the year 2020, it remains the same, right? We have that data in 2021. We are already acknowledging that we do have a retirement in 2022. It goes down to 11,300,000 roughly. And then in 2023, when we are at optimal, what we consider to be optimal staffing for based on our calls for service and the uh, information that Mr. Jennings referenced, it is gonna be the different of $12.3 million down to roughly $10.6 million. A total savings to the South Orange and Maplewood taxpayers of roughly $1.656 million. Now, in the below box, this is just to give you a little bit of an indication of what this means when we talk about personnel savings. On the South Orange side, uh, we anticipate 45% and the Maplewood side, 55%. And it's going to give or take, it's going to have a standard deviation of roughly about 3% because we are looking at basing this on assessed value. So this is the attrition from 76 to 71, and South Orange's side is roughly $750,000 give or take, and Maplewood side is roughly $900,000, give or take. Now, when you compound that over 10 years, uh, again, this is very significant. Um, the optimal savings, again, in one year at full attrition, when you compound that, what you turn that into is, for example, in South Orange, you can't just multiply it by 10 because healthcare costs and pension costs rise faster than any type of two or 3% escalator, is that it could be in the $10 million range. And for Maplewood, it would certainly be north of that, probably in 12 or $13 million. Again, assumptions. So it's not immediate satisfaction. Um, it is thinking about the long term. And it is not just about, um, to be clear, no taxpayer is going to get a tax rebate. These communities are investing in infrastructure like they have never done before. Cost avoidance is perhaps the most important thing that we're trying to do. South Orange and Maplewood both had the highest tax levies than we have in the past 10 years post-pandemic. And we have to figure out a way to control this because $9,000 or $19,000 in South Orange respectively and $17,000 in Maplewood respectively is unconscionable. We cannot continue doing what we are doing. And so um, in terms of tax percentage points in South Orange, $280,000 roughly is one tax percentage point. In Maplewood, $387,000 is one tax percentage point. So when we're evaluating budgets, when we're having budget presentations, this money is very, very serious because whether it's investing in our public libraries, our Baird Community Center, our public roads, the variety of things that we have to invest in our water and sewer infrastructure, these are cost avoidances that we do not have to levy on tax taxpayers, right, or defer maintenance and kick it to a future governing body to deal with is that we are just trying to find the efficiencies and cost savings where we can become better with our services and still realize that for our taxpayers. Next, we are moving on to, <coughs> excuse me, the status of the major recommendations. So from the report in 2017, Mr. Jennings outlined again First, analyzing the South Orange uh, Fire Department and also the Maplewood Fire Department. And we do believe that we have made some progress on the uh, initial recommendations. And uh, we're gonna go through those very briefly. I will be doing the South Orange side and then I will turn it over to Mayor McGeehee to review uh, the major recommendations for the Maplewood Fire Department. So the first was the review of the civil service job titles for firefighter EMT in light of current requirements. This will be under consideration in a joint meeting structure. Right now, as you know, uh, Maplewood provides EMS services, South Orange does not. And so that is something that we were not willing to go into uh, without this joint meeting and then evaluating those uh, civil service titles or titles in general, as I might say. 
survey. Administrative policies need to be comprehensive update, uh, comprehensively updated. We have been working with our fire chief who has been uh, proposing a set of different uh, softwares uh, that we can do to make sure that we're continuously up to date with best practices in the state as it relates to administrative policies. Review the department's operating budget. Current budget is small and has not increased in several years. Thank you for that, Charles. And we did, in fact, increase the budget from $76,000 uh, when the report was uh, originally commissioned up to $100,000 in 2018, and then currently sitting at $168,125 for fiscal year 21. Develop a strategic plan for the fire department under review. Again, while these um, conversations continued, we thought it was in the best interest of both towns is that as we create a long-term and short-term strategic plan, we do that together. Existing records are insufficient. Fully utilize existing software for record keeping and key information under uh, review and in progress. As you can see, we had much better data for the past two years since the original report, and that's a testament to our fire chief and making sure that we have good data. Good data begets good public policy. Um, next, it is develop a formal health and safety program to include a fitness component using national standards as a guide. Again, those things improve our ISO ratings under review as well. Consider hiring a part-time civilian administrative support position that has been offered to our South Orange Fire Department, uh, similar to Maplewood, who does have an administrative assistant. And we understand the value of having somebody who is assisting the chief of the department in day-to-day -day operations. Next, we have a few more on the South Orange side. Consider creating a dedicated code enforcement position. This is not approved and not under consideration. We are looking at within the merger, um, also partnering with Maplewood and paying our fair share of their table of organization as described previously is that they have a captain inspector and also a full-time uh, civilian inspector. So we can share in those costs again, uh, develop a training program and track records accordingly to comply with state insurance industry and national standards. Program has been developed, including enhanced record keeping. Consider developing criteria for limited emergency medical support role by the South Orange Fire Department, which is something that we absolutely want to do. Uh, right now, we are at CPR and AED annual certification in process, but with the potential of the merger, this is something that we would do collaboratively and together. As mentioned before, the Maplewood Fire Department provides EMS services. South Orange does not. Uh, we outsource with Monarch, and then uh, we have the privilege of having an amazing fully volunteer South Orange rescue squad that we heavily rely on. Next contract for dispatch, uh, dispatch services with a specialized uh, specialist fire dispatch provider. Uh, this is completed. Uh, South Orange is very thrilled that we entered into an agreement uh, with REMS roughly about a month and a half ago, and, and we had budgeted for uh, their services in this year's annual operating budget. Begin formally recording actual response time information, quote, on the scenes. Uh, partial implementation that began before our uh, agreement with REMS, but we do anticipate by being on unified dispatch, the record keeping and the standardization of the type of calls that we go on and response times will be now fully coordinated with the Maplewood Fire Department. Consider staffing to assure two EMT certified personnel on duty per shift, not under consideration as a standalone for the South Orange Fire Department, but certainly will be um, if we undertake this undertaking uh, under a joint meeting and dispose of spare apparatus stored at the crush drive and under uh, the railroad viaduct. That's completed. Thanks. So now moving on to the Maplewood recommendations. Mayor Frank. Yeah. And Village President, I will be brief. <laughs> 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 so we do have one. Uh, it is consider upgrading an on-duty firefighter position at headquarters to a company officer to provide direct unit level supervision. You've done two of four positions at this time. So I will now yield the floor back to you. <laughs> to continue with some of the uh, status of major, major recommendations. Brevity has always been in your strong suit, Mayor, <laughs> Mayor Frank. All right, and now, along with the independent recommendations that Mr. Jennings or Dr. Jennings had made to us, he also had the major recommendations regarding the consolidation. The first one is the automatic joint response. Uh, this is one that I am so thrilled that the governing bodies got done. 
man, it's like multitasking. I don't know what's I wrong gotcha. with me. It must be the caffeine. So uh, automatic joint response, right? So uh, this was one of the recommendations of, you know, even as separate entities, how can you leverage getting more people to uh, potential structural fire or signal 11? And this is one that we authorized in the fall, and it just came to fruition uh, just a couple months ago. Um, there's different philosophies around that. Does one town send a full box, you know, into another community, taking on a full task force of a truck? and two engines, or is it something where you start a little bit smaller? And what we agreed to was to mirror what Summit and Chatham did, I believe, in their shared service agreement, which is essentially allowing an engine to go to each one of our respective communities. I think it's probably one of the greatest things that we've seen, because as we've heard from the radio communications, getting more bodies to the scene as soon as possible is a benefit, not just for the property owners, for the people who might be in the structure, but for our firefighters, that more is more. The second one is merge into a single entity, that is why we are here tonight, unifying dispatch at REMS. This has been completed and has been fully implemented. Interoperable radio system. This is, again, something different. Uh, South Orange had moved on to what is considered P25. We moved to a statewide interoperable network. Maplewood made that investment shortly after. Um, we have talk groups now going back and forth before we were unified on REMS. So one thing is if you merge departments, people have to be able to talk to each other. I will acknowledge the firefighters from both Maplewood and our South Orange Fire Chief. Uh, we are working on some technical things with the state and the, their Department of Information Technology to get investments on some of our radio uh, communications and our towers that make sure that not just South Orange and Maplewood, but all of our surrounding agencies that are on the state uh, statewide network um, have strong signal strength. So this is something that, again, is a collaboration between our departments right now. And in the interim, we do have some short-term fixes where we can have repeaters in some of our deputy chief's cars, but the radios and the interoperability is going to, it was a major investment from both communities, and we continue to hope to improve and work on that with the state of New Jersey. The red alert software, something Maplewood has, South Orange does not, not started yet, hope to start that. Merge training programs, very difficult, obviously, during the pandemic. But uh, some of the joint training began in the fall of 2020 between um, our various tours. Uh, hopefully people enjoyed themselves. And most recently, we coordinated together on live burn training, which uh, seems from what we heard from people that it was a good experience. Uh, consolidate staffing options, reviewed and proposed, as you saw from the PowerPoint presentation earlier today, and analyze backfill, which uh, Mr. Jennings did do on the full report, which can be found on southorange.org. And the Maplewood Township Committee is uh, um, analyzing backfill when we're out on mutual aid calls, when Maplewood is out on EMS calls, et cetera, is that, again, remember that number when I talked about minimums? When we fall below that minimum, what does backfill look like, both when we're doing mutual aid, automatic aid, and then when we have people who are out of our station houses for whatever reason, whether it's illness, injury, vacation, et cetera? So as you can see, 75% of these uh, major recommendations um, have either been completed or active as we move forward. That is correct. So now I'm going to turn it over to um, Committeeman Vic DeLuca, uh, who will take us through the recent actions of the governing bodies and the Joint Exploratory Committee. Sheena, just to be 100 percent correct. For the record. You have sure. to hit your button. Just to be 100 no. no. yeah, no. Just to be 100 percent correct for the record, Summit's mutual aid is with Milburn, not Chatham. Yep, I am very sorry about no that. Problem. I was trying to remember no that problem. off the top of my head. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Glatt. And that's why you're the czar. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you get paid the big bucks as a volunteer. <laughs> so I'm excited. Thanks for coming out tonight. You know, I've spent 20 years on the Township Committee talking about f fire department consolidation. And um, actually, the first village president that I negotiated with, Doug Newman, is here. And, and um, he's a little different than Sheena. But uh, he laid the groundwork <laughs> for all of our conversations. And then um, when Sheena came in office, we revived those conversations. And I can tell you that we have never, in the history of both towns here, we have never been this far in the process. And I think you said it earlier about the courage and the stick to -itiveness. And I would just urge all of us, don't let this moment slide. There's always been a reason why we have failed. This cannot be another time. So all that conversation, we just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we were doing prior to COVID. And we were on a bit of a roll uh, in, um, 
in um, June of 2019, we started five meetings with um, various stakeholders, the, the czars, uh, the Division of Local Government Services. And then we had meetings with the South Orange Local, the FMBA, the, the FMBA Local 240 and 40, the Maplewood Local 25, and the state FMBA. And we met over at the Emergency Management Building uh, in Maplewood on Boyden Avenue. Again, we didn't have masks. We were able to sit around the table. These were difficult conversations, but we were face-to-face -face having those conversations. And um, we continued to move forward. In July 2019, both municipalities, we took a big step we, by deciding that we were going to pursue a joint meeting. This was a little different than we had talked about before, where Maplewood was going to absorb the department. Now we were talking about having equal status on a governing body for both municipalities and having a separate joint meeting that would go, was to run the fire department. In, oops, sorry, how do I get it back? In uh, August, one more, August of 2019, um, we again passed the resolution that we were going to move forward in this joint meeting. And in October, we actually did that. Um, we said we were going to prepare an ordinance, standard operating procedures, do merger costs, and really do all, and then start working with the uh, civil service to make sure that we could move forward on all the things that we had to do in order to protect our current workers and move forward as a joint meeting shared service department. And so that's where we are. We've made some decisions. Um, in September 2020, Sheena talked about the automatic response. But a couple other agreements we've made, we have a name. The name is the South Mountain Regional Fire Department, and we have a table of organization. Uh, we talked about the percentages of how we were going to uh, uh, fund this. Um, we talked about how we're going to do fire inspections the selection process for the leadership. Um, and then we agreed that, as, as was said, that Maplewood would continue with its emergency medical services. So decisions have been made. We have tried to be accommodating to all the various stakeholders. You know, we heard Charles say there's 41,000 people in our two towns, and that's primarily who we respond to. But we also want to be responsive and respectful of the hardworking men and women that make up our departments. So we have a lot more to do, but we have had a lot of conversations and we've had people at the table. We will continue to have people at the table. Having the structure of the joint meeting will allow us to equally make a decision of how we're gonna provide fire services in the two towns. And the map that you saw, we're not looking, we're taking out that middle political boundary and thinking of it as one town and how we're going to provide those services. So that's, what we, that's where we are. Those are the conversations, and we're going to continue to have those conversations. Thank you very much, uh, Committeeman DeLuca. So this is the thank you. Uh, for those of you who are joining us from our social media streams and viewing on TV, um, if you were unable to join us here today, we have set up an email address that comes to our joint exploratory committee, that is joint fire services at southorange.org. Um, after tonight, this report, the video of the report, and what exists today, the original report from Manitou in fall of 2017 and the updated supplemental report, which was released last month, are all available on our websites. So if you couldn't be here today, that's totally fine. The more feedback is more feedback. So we are encouraging all of our residents and stakeholder groups to be thoughtful, to look at all the materials, to ask some good questions, and we hope to revisit this um, in the upcoming weeks and make sure that everybody feels comfortable or that at a bare minimum that they have been heard and their questions acknowledged. So now we're moving on to the public comment uh, portion. Uh, so, I think, should we leave this up just in case we have to reference it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna keep this up. Maybe I'm gonna take it all the way back to the first slide. Okay. So. 
And so uh, I'm going to do a little tag team between myself and, and Mayor McGee. We'd like to hear from folks. We are cognizant that we see a lot of uh, faces out there. So uh, we might make some exceptions uh, for some certain folks that are here tonight. Um, but we like to try and keep things to three minutes. Um, please be mindful of each other because depending on how many folks want to address the governing body, uh, we just want to get through everybody, right? And then if we have to do another round, we're going to do that, but we're here to listen to you and hear your feedback. Uh, we do ask that you um, come up the staircase right here, and we have a podium right here, um, and that way viewers at home can see you, and, and we can certainly see you here as well. And so um, with that said, uh, we just ask for your name and address or any titles that you might have, and uh, try and limit your comments to three minutes. Um, I should also clarify, too, it is not typical for the governing body to respond back in real time. So we um, do have uh, the South Orange Deputy Administrators capturing any questions, any comments you have that is obviously your own. And at the end of the public comment portion, we will go through and make sure we redirect those to the appropriate professionals that are on the stage tonight. Um, Mr. Steve Schnall, would you like to introduce Schnall. yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm Stephen Schnall. I reside at Five Cottage Place in South Orange, and I have to say this is a very different perspective for me because normally I would have been up there for the, as I was for the last eight years. So, um, Mr. Schnall, as you know, when IT is flashing the light, it means that you need to speak closer into the microphone. I don't have <laughs> so <practice> let's <laughs> we're we're going to do a quick test right here, Mr. Hollow. Uh, let us know. How am I doing? Good. Good. All right. All right. So what I was saying is this is a different perspective for me actually talking to the trustees and village uh, township, township council. Um, and I'm not going to be discussing the relative merits. I understand this is uh, potentially controversial. Um, but what I am offering is my perspective. So actually as a trustee who was involved with these going back four years ago at, or more, uh, I remember the Manitou report being dropped. It was a tome and it dropped on our desk. It was deep. It was full of details. And what I want to offer is how much I appreciate how that work was done, how detailed the investigation was done, and how much, um, um, the, the, how much the people involved actually listened. Uh, and it was a very good give or take. I, you know, there were people who had different perspectives, and I think they were all taken in regard. So again, without getting into the details, I know there'll be lots of people who are going to discuss that. What I want to offer from my perspective is an appreciation for all those involved uh, and this got a little heated, you know, and, and I think Mr. Jennings did a fabulous job really laying it out, took input, uh, and then I see we have one of the czars, Jordan was here, and, you know, we, I was involved with these guys, um, and I got to say, DCA did their part, uh, we got consultants in, we have financial spreadsheets done, and I, you know, having come from a corporate background uh, where collaboration is necessary, found this process truly collaborative. Um, more so than I think I had seen in hardly any other experience where, again, you have competing parties. There's, you know, sometimes it felt like South Orange versus Maplewood, so, you know, sometimes government versus union and, and all the different dynamics um, that could come to play did come to play. Um, but at the end of the, of the story, what, what I want to really share with everybody here and, and at home um, is the listening that was going on, the understanding, the hearing, the, the willingness to try scenarios. Um, again, because you're talking about people's lives here, this, the, 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 uh, not only the opportunities which were being laid out, but also the conse potential consequences had to be considered and weighed and, and all the different scenarios. So um, again, that, there'll be plenty of time. I'm sure folks will want to make their case. I'm not here to do that. I'm really here just to, to reinforce what I felt was a really well-run process. Kudos to all those people involved and, and uh, both in these towns as well as to coming from Trenton and other third parties um, for really, again, listening and I, what I think is a terrific job at hopefully coming to a conclusion that I don't think will ever meet 100% of what everybody wants. You can't please everybody all the time. Um, but I think in an effort to be coming to a satisfactory and really workman style, um, I, I don't know if the right word is compromise, but let's say compromise solution. I just want to say I think this was really done. So kudos to all of you. And now I get to sit down and not have to vote. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schnall. 
Uh, next speaker. Yeah, no pre-sign up or anything like that. Good evening, trustees and uh, Maplewood Town Council members. Mr. Um, Sando, I'm going to ask you to lift that. You're a taller gentleman, and let's see if we can get that mic closer to you. Okay. Good evening, trustees and Maplewood Town Council members. My name is Robert Sandow. I live at 69 South Center Street in South Orange. Um, I am and have been for the past eight years the chair of the South Orange Citizens Budget Advisory Committee. Um, what that means for those who don't know is that the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee is appointed by the trustees of South Orange to advise the trustees on any issues that impact the South Orange budget. Um, so I have heard of this project for a number of years and understood that it was um, a not only a cost saving measure but also a measure to improve service and, and, and um, really to get to integrate the, uh, the, the, the fire departments in a way that would that would make it make response times better, et cetera, et cetera. So then I learned that the, uh, the combined savings between the two towns would be over $1.6 million per year. And as the village president noted that, you know, that, that is a significant number of percentage points that, the, the, that both um, municipalities would, would reap in lower in lowering their uh, their overall budget outlays so um i would like to just i, I i'm going to be brief i just want to say that i am fully on board with this i think it's it streamlines the organizations removes un, unnecessary la layers of management and um i think it's it's very good for both both municipalities thank you Thank you, Mr. Sandow. Next speaker. I'm Douglas Newman. I've lived in South Orange for 32 years. And I served as village president from 2007 to 2011. Uh, I am proud to say that uh, former Mayor Fred Profeta and I began talking about fire department consolidation in 2007. Uh, and uh, I never thought I'd be here 14 years later uh, addressing this topic, but <laughs> government works in strange and unusual ways. Um, but it's very exciting to see the level of professionalism and the degree of in-depth analysis and thought that's been given to this through this study and through this study process. Uh, it's a very difficult topic. Uh, when we brought together the Violations Bureau Municipal Courts between South Orange and Maplewood, that was difficult, but that was really, in retrospect, child's play compared to what you're contemplating here. So I totally get it. Uh, the perspective I want to give is really not about the cost savings, not about the advantages and response time, but about really the history and the geography, which is to say, for those of you who don't know, South Orange and Maplewood were one town. Uh, in 1869, uh, South Orange Village split off from South Orange Township, which then became Maplewood. And uh, that was 50 years later, the renaming. And uh, it's sort of serendipitous that they became two towns and therefore two sets of everything. Uh, what's striking to me is that we're adjacent to many municipalities that are much larger than South Orange and Maplewood combined. Uh, I did a little bit of research today to refresh my memory. Uh, just in terms of land mass, Livingston with 14 square miles, West Orange with 12 square miles, and Milburn with 10 square miles all have a single fire department. We have 6.7 square miles combined. So we have three adjacent towns that dwarf our towns and they do just fine with one fire department each. I grew up in West Orange. They have four firehouses for that large landmass. 
it works seamlessly. I also want to add that on a population level, South Orange with 41 or 42,000 and Maplewood combined, that's the two towns, uh, we have uh, similar, we have uh, fewer than West Orange and similar to Montclair. Again, each of those towns, one fire department. There is precedent and the precedent surrounds us in that we have all of these towns around us that successfully get by day after day with one fire department. So I think with all of the work that you folks have done together with the fire departments, this is achievable and I agree with uh, Vic DeLuca, it's time to stay the course and not, and not walk away from this. It, I think we're ready for this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Next speaker. Uh, it's good to be back. It's actually good to be back in the flesh and see actual faces, not screens and things like that. Uh, Walter Clark, 328 Lennox mm -hmm. Avenue, uh, former village trustee, 2013 to a couple months ago. Um, I'm basically here to uh, hopefully be briefer and not go into history, but uh, I will uh, I will just encourage you, uh, I have supported this uh, pretty much from the first time we started talking about it, uh, provided that certain things could be baked into it and it would, uh, it would achieve specific goals. Uh, actual cost, cost savings was one of those goals, but uh, we were also very interested in that the, the fire department would still be efficacious. There would be no concerns over service uh, or, or any loss of service to any of the people of South Orange or Maplewood. And I think the, the plan you have arrived at achieves those things. And uh, to uh, former Mayor Vic DeLuca's point, uh, this has been a long time coming. It's not like it hasn't been considered and, and vetted. And um, as former Trustee Chanel said, I, I, I agree that uh, it's been a, a, a very good process, an inclusive process, and a very considered one. And that is important because what you are doing is important. Uh, change <coughs> is always difficult. Change uh, scares the hell out of a lot of people. Even when we know that we have issues that are problematic, change is still frightening in a lot of ways. And it takes tenacity, and it takes courage to follow through on change and to try to improve things. Um, so I congratulate all of you and all of the uh, members of our fire department who have taken part of this process, and to you as well. Uh, the czars, it does feel strange to say, I've heard of the czars. Uh, I feel like I'm in a different place. Uh, but I, I just want to congratulate you all on this process and for having the courage to follow through and enact change. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Next speaker, please. Stephen, can you hear that back there? Could tilt it closer. That way. Hi. There, you there go. we go. There you go. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eddie Donnelly. I'm the president of New Jersey State FMBA. Our office is at um, on Campbell Street in Rawway, New Jersey. Um, there was a method to my madness to kind of wait and see what some of the other folks had to, uh, to speak about. And I just want to touch on a couple things. One of the uh, former trustees, first of all, thank you, mayor and council and um, the trustees and trustee chairman for allowing us to be here tonight. I appreciate it. It's not exactly what uh, the forum in which I wanted to do this, but it's, uh, it's where we are and, and we'll get through it the best that we can. 
One of the things that uh, was mentioned, you know, in comparing, and this is why doing these things in a public forum sometimes gives taxpayers, residents, folks in the audience, skewed visions and ideas of things, is because when you compare Mount, uh, Maplewood and South Orange to a West Orange or a Montclair, I mean, there's so many different variables that come into effect there, but the one that sticks out to me the most, both of those municipalities have north of 90 firefighters apiece. So if we're gonna sit here and we're gonna compare and we're gonna do this in public, we gotta get both sides to be able to give the, the, give the ability to be able to go back and explain it to the residents so they, and to the, the council members so they have a true understanding of what we're talking about. Another comment I want to make, and I'm, I'm upset Mr. Glad is not here, um, uh, Mr. Platt is not here, Jordan's with us, um, and Jordan, you can take this back to Nick. When, um, when the governor formed the two czars and formed that, we were informed, one of the first things that the FMBA did was we reached out and we had a very nice dinner with Mayor Glatt and Mayor Platt. And at that dinner, and please, if I'm wrong, say it here. The one thing that I made crystal clear at that dinner was that the FMBA does not not support mergers, consolidations, joint meetings. All I asked at that dinner was that we be at the table. And I heard Mr. Glatt say over and over tonight, and I've heard folks up here say over and over tonight, thousands of meetings have happened. And when I go through Mr. Jennings' report, I'm gonna point out in his report where he talks about thousands of meetings and multiple meetings with DCA and multiple meetings with, with um, El Division of Local Government Services and multiple meetings with the czars. You know who wasn't at the table? Us. We weren't. We came for a short period of time pre-COVID, we got a lot of things accomplished. Mr. DeLuca talks about some of the accomplishments. One of the accomplishments he fails to bring up is that at those meetings, we agreed on civil service. Now civil service is off the table from what I'm being told. And again, that's hearsay. It's never been told to me in a formal setting. So when we agreed on that, here's the biggest, the biggest piece. When you all... Mr. Donnelly, we're going to be extending your time. Continue. Thank you. I appreciate that. When you talk about, and Mr. Jennings and, and, and Mrs. Collum and, and, and the czars talk about automatic aid, who brought that up? Can anyone answer me who brought up in those meetings about automatic aid and why not doing it? And Mr. Jennings' report clearly talks about the cost savings and efficiencies that can be accomplished by automatic aid without going through the rest of this for a without going through the rest of this. It was the FMBA who brought that up. It was the FMBA who was at the table that said, listen, it works in Summit and Milburn. It works around the state in other areas. Let's do it, we'll support it. You had some issues with your chiefs trying to figure out what to respond, how to respond, but you ultimately got it done with no objection from the FMBA, zero. I can tell you I wasn't involved in any of those meetings Nobody called me to say, hey, Ed, you got to show up and help us here. Zero objection from the FMBA. Mayor and, uh, and, and, and trustee chairman, I, I, would, I would like the opportunity to, uh, to direct some questions through the chair to Mr. Jennings. Is, is that possible or I'm, I'm not allowed? We'll give some flexibility. Uh, just acknowledge that, again, I, some things might need to be followed up on if, if he does not have it available yeah, if you don't want today. to answer the question, you don't have to answer the question. I just want to say, with, in regards to the financial numbers, full disclosure again, DCA is not here tonight. Does every council member and trustee member know why DCA is not here tonight? I asked them not to be. I asked the lieutenant governor to please don't send staff here tonight because we're not ready. I'm not going to go through those numbers that you put up there and how you talked about them and how vibrant and beautiful and uh, magnificent they are. I disagree with some of them. I do. I have facts to back it up and I have a meeting that we all will be at in Trenton with DCA coming up in the next couple of weeks. That is where we should have discussed the financials and the proposed cost savings. Not here, not to the taxpayers that only hear one side and we didn't get the opportunity to talk about those numbers. Should not have been here. Voodoo man. I was the one, again, 
transparent, the one that brought up voodoo man. I'm changing that now, village president. It's imaginary man. But again, let's talk about it in Trenton. With the DCA there, with the numbers in front of us, with our professionals and our experts to be able to discuss them with you. In regards to Mr. Jennings, I, I just have to, I, I would like to go through this report with you a little bit. Um, I read your background today, very impressive. Where, where did you, like, where'd you cut your teeth structurally firefighting? Where, did you do that in New York? It's been a, uh, you got hmm? a oh. okay. Uh, yeah, I was a structural firefighter in uh, Ithaca, New York, in Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, and uh, ended up as a acting chief and deputy commissioner in White Plains, New York. You've been out of that position for a while, though, right? You've been in the, uh, in the administrative side? Uh, as, yes, I left White Plains in 2008. <clears throat> okay. And at that time, I was uh, still uh, actively engaged in supervision on the fire ground. Structural firefighting. Um, I'm just going to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Jennings, when you're speaking, if you don't mind, uh, just so we can pick you up on the microphone. Sure. And just so you know, sir, um, I don't know, and I'm not going to ask you when, but I just want you and, and everyone to know that the unions did not receive this updated report until June 25th. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not involved in, in the implementation phase. Okay. Are you, will, are you willing to tell us when it was handed over to, to council and trustees or no? Uh, I don't have that right in front of me. Okay. I mean, that sounds, doesn't sound, that sounds pretty close to when Not it's far done. off. All right. And on, um, on page three, can we, can we look at page three for a second of the, uh, of the updated report? And again, this speaks to um, Mr. Glatt's comments about the thousands of meetings. So when you talk about thanking the folks for overseeing this report. Those, those are these folks here. We you have the village president, we have the mayor, we have the former mayor, we have the business administrators. Those, those folks oversaw this report, right? Yeah, they, they supervised the, the study. Right. And then you consulted, which in the first report, you did, you did, did you consult with the unions or no? Yes. You did. And what, what, how many meetings did that, was that? I, I don't honestly have that in front of me. I think it was more than one that we had, and we had some discussion on the second study. Obviously, as you're aware, uh, was COVID, and so I think we only had one phone call with each of the union presidents. Right, it was one, one with each of the union presidents. So and, was the, and for the purposes of clarification, uh, I made my contact information available to them should they have any questions, and, uh, and they did not contact me. Understood. But uh, while, while that was going on, hundreds of other meetings were happening with, with other folks, as stated in the report, correct? Again, I can't speak to the history on the ground okay. of all the meetings between the municipalities and others. Uh, I can only speak to uh, uh, the meetings I had yeah, as part I think of the on study. On page seven, you, you, you note that you met two times with the FMBA. Right? Mr. Donnelly, if I could just clarify one thing. And yes, I sir. think uh, Mayor DeLuca and Village President Colmer, there wasn't a meeting that I was at with the governing bodies that there wasn't a union rep. It, we may have had a conference call going through an agenda, but there wasn't a meeting that I was at discussing this. Am I right? If I'm wrong, tell me, please, because I believe that there was a union representative at every one of our meetings. Over you were at the board. whiteboard meetings, right, Jordan? No. No. I was at the ones in... Uh, in Maplewood. In Maplewood, right? Yeah. And there was always somebody from the union there that I was... If I... Am I... That is correct. Wrong in that? No, I you're just, not. I just want to not. You are correct. Clear. And just, Mr. Donnelly, we're not going to cross-examine Dr. Jennings tonight. I'm just... That's something I will not tolerate. Yeah, I, I, I think you. your questioning should be fair, but gotcha. if you're... Please. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, all right. On page eight. With the additional agreements between the two municipalities, um, we don't, number three, uh, we're not aware of that agreement. So at some point, if we can be made aware of that, that would be, that would be good. Um, and Mr. Jennings, are you aware that um, both former chiefs of Maplewood 
the former chief of South Orange, and I would implore you to talk to the current chiefs of Maplewood and South Orange. I will not speak for them. Um, even in, in some of the white board meetings, the director of the Division of Fire Safety um, have grave concerns with 71 as the number. And I have uh, affidavits from those folks with me that I will provide to the mayor and, and council president. Um, are you aware of that? How could I'm aware that there are concerns. I'm aware that the, some of the executives are, are not supportive okay. of the merger. Okay. Just, just trying to, just, I just want to make sure, you know, when, when, when I come up here, I get looked at by some people as, as trying to create fear and trying to, this is not me just coming up here and saying, we as the experts, we are the men and women with boots on the ground that have concerns about this. Never once did we say, don't do this. Never once did we say, stop. Never once did we say, enough. But we've consistently said, this is not safe. There is grave concerns with the number 71. The number 71 does not work. And if we could just look at a couple more things. I know I'm eating up a lot of time here. Can we go to, uh, Page 11, with uh, the future developments. Sir, with everything that's going on in South Orange and Maplewood, as far as the developments that are booming, you're comfortable in your expertise in, in saying that 71 is adequate to protect? Yes. Okay. Have you seen the master plan from South Orange, the 251 page? Yes. And you've noticed all of the new constructions that are going up in town? And the plans, because you, you note them in here, and you say that they're 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 low at best, at yeah. the yes. Okay, and you're you're comfortable in the 71 number being able to protect the residents of South Orange and Maplewood. I'm comfortable with the number 71 to be able to protect the residents of the combined Understood. communities. Okay, um, I'm going to leave you with this because again. I just don't think this is the forum to do this. Um, there's many parts of that report that we would like to have the opportunity to sit down and go over and be able to point out um, the DCA numbers. We're going to have that opportunity in Trenton. But I'm going to leave you with this. There was two significant fire mergers in New Jersey over the past two decades, three decades. One was in North Hudson. They merged five municipalities into one municipality. That's now the North Hudson Regional Fire Department. That was not supported in the way it was presented. And it, it had a lot of the characteristics. Christy Whitman was the, the governor, and there was a lot of money being floated around to give to those municipalities to merge these departments. And Union City, Union City as the biggest department, took advantage of the, the $1.6 million at the time. Um, the amount of money and time that they spent litigating, discussing the, 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 the morale. Now, I was on the job at that point in 1999. I, was just, I just became a firefighter in 2000. The morale in that department, I can tell you, took 10 years for it to clear up. The arbitration award that came out of that, that was issued, I'm gonna say that that was merged in 99. The arbitration award came out sometime in 04, 05 is still active today. They are living by that Mastriani Arbitration Award. There is still cost associated with doing this thing without all people involved. Now I'm gonna take it a little forward to a merger that we just did uh, at the end of this year in Hamilton in Mercer County. That was not only supported by the unions, that was initiated by the unions. The FMBA initiated merging eight districts into one municipal district, and we got it done. And there's cost savings. And our governor just dedicated $1.2 million to the merge department in Hamilton because it was the right thing to do. It was a cost savings, it gave cost fairness to all of the districts, and it provided a better, more safe fire department. I'm not saying that we can't put together 
a fire department that's more safe for my members and more safe for your residents. I am not saying that tonight. Please hear that. All I am saying is we got to do it the right way. It's got to be done safe. We got to do it where we sit down and it's not just one set of numbers that say one thing and it's not one report. We take the input of the people that are here. We take the input of the past chiefs that dedicated 30 years of their life. What do you think the past chiefs have to gain? They have nothing to gain by coming back here and saying that this isn't right. None of them are saying don't do it. Every one of them will tell you, every one of them will tell you that they've lived through it in some part of their career. But it was never done the right way. It was never done with input from the experts, the men and women on the ground that are in these communities protecting the residents and the visitors. It was never done that way. And that's why we're back here again. Who Somebody said it tonight, please don't let this die. I don't want it to die. My members do not want it to die. Everybody hear that? They do not want this thing to go away. The only thing we want to do is make sure that we provide a safe service to the residents in the best way to keep our members safe. So thank you for the time. Thank you for allowing me to go past my, uh, my three minutes. Um, and if you have anything for me, I'll be, I'll be here. Thank you. Mr. Donnelly, we might bring you back after we finish this public comment for some questions. Next speaker. Good evening, does that work? Mm -hmm. For the record, uh, my name is Mike Serra. I am the Executive Director of the New Jersey State League of Municipalities. I'm joined tonight as well by the League President, Mayor Janice Kovach. I don't make it a habit of attending every public meeting in the state of New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes I wish I could, maybe with Zoom I could, but uh, I'm here tonight because I felt the issue that before you tonight is of statewide significance. And I'm here to support your efforts and to commend you for the work that you've done through many, many years, going back many, many administrations. There's a myth out there that the League of Municipalities does not support shared services. It is a myth. What we support is putting the power and the decision making in the hands of locally elected and accounted, accountable elected officials such as yourself. When I see the presentation that I saw tonight, the excellent work of uh, the two czars, of your consultant, and the years of work and thought power going back multiple administrations, I'm somewhat in awe of, of the dedication to this cause going back so many years. We're all watching the Olympics right now. You probably went through more than a marathon, you probably went through a decathlon and you're not even there yet. But I, th I think the work, the process that you've gone through is extraordinary. I believe Nick made the comment about it could be a, local, a template statewide. Jordan talked about courage, and that's leadership and legacy making. So I, while I'm not gonna get into the nuts and bolts of this report, I, I think I might help me get to sleep tonight with all due respect, but. Uh, it has to be that way because you, you're dealing with a serious issue. I want to thank you for what you've done. I do, I do think folks are watching statewide, and I'm proud to say that the decision is where it belongs in your hands. So continue doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Janice, what a pleasure for South Orange and Maplewood. Uh, to welcome the mayor of Clinton here. Um, wonderful to see you, and thank you for your leadership as president of the League of Municipalities. Next speaker. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for giving me the time to talk. Um, I had a big presentation. I was here a couple years ago. 
um, talk to y'all, and I have my 1710 all ready to go tonight. But Sir, can, can you introduce yourself? I'm sorry. Good? No. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Wayne Wolf, State FMBA. Um, as I said, I was here a couple years ago and spoke to you, and I was going to speak on 1710 tonight, but I'm not going to bore everybody with too many numbers. I just wanted to comment on a couple things. And uh, as Dr. Jennings has said, he spoke about NFPA just being the standard um, across the United States, and he is correct on that. However, in litigation, um, that is the standard that courts use. So when we talk about nobody has to adopt that, just remember any litigation that goes on, the NFPA is the standard in the court. I also had a couple people mention that it took courage um, to do this merger. And uh, I don't want to say I was taken aback by that, but I, I was a little stunned um, because we're not against mergers, and I don't see this being courage at all. I think what courage is, is ensuring that both your residents and employers are properly protected with the proper staffing and the resources they need to provide the public safety to the residents. That's courage. Okay? We agree with the merger. We have no problem with that. Also, Ms. Dr. Jennings, um, when they had the slides up, talked about service calls as not being an emergency. I find that hard to believe that that came from a man with his credentials. Because the person on the other line, on that phone, that's an emergency. Whether it's their baby locked in the car, or the electrical wire hanging from their house, or some other thing that they call about, it's an emergency. So to downplay that from a man of um, his stature is pretty shocking to me. Also, Dr. Jennings said he endorses, I'm going to talk about the numbers here for a couple minutes, said he endorses the 17 and going no lower than 14. The problem with that is, in the report, in his own report, it's not going to be 14. Maplewood is going to continue with their ambulance. They've already said it. In the report, it was 56% of the time. That ambulance, that, that demanding on that ambulance will not be available for fire calls. So now I'm down to 12. I'm not at 14 anymore. I'm at 12 the majority of the time. Also in his report, he states that he agrees that the joint consolidation should continue mutual aid. What do we do now? I got an ambulance out. I was at 14. I went to 12. And I just sent a truck with four people on it outside of town. Now I'm down to eight. So we went from the 14 that he did endorse to eight to protect the consolidated residents here. Again. We don't have a problem with the merger. We don't. But as President Donnelly said, it needs to be done correctly and safely. I don't remember the exact number, um, Madam President. I believe it was 1.6 that was up there for the savings. Um, oh, roughly. Was, Continue uh, on. The 1.6 savings. I look at it as, listen, we want to get rid of four deputies. Everybody here knows we're understaffed. Everybody. Why wouldn't I take if I don't need four deputies and hire four firefighters or eight firefighters or 12? All in cost for 12 firefighters is still only going to be 1.5 million. You're still under your 1.7 that you talked about. Why are we not striving to bring people up, to bring your workforce up, to better be able, capable of taking care of the residents? Why are we going backwards? or maintaining the status quo. Because unlike what's in his report about the 14 and 17, we are going down. You're going from 18 to 17. And I already went through how you're not going to be at 14 the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. The residents need to know that, because that's not in the report. As President Donnelly said, we ask the please. There's a lot of things in here that need to be fixed. We're willing to work with you. Please reach out. Thank you for your time. Sir, can you repeat your name and your title? Wayne Wolk. Vice President, State FMBA, W-O-W-O-L-K. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please.
Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Just as close as you can for the viewers yeah. at home. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Michael Goldberg, uh, 39 Mayhew Drive in South Orange. Um, also a former trustee in South Orange, um, South Orange Board, former trustee uh, in South Orange from 2007 to 2013. Um, it's very strange being at this podium and not complaining about something, which was my <laughs> former uh, <coughs> uh, career before I was on the board. Anyway, I want to just come out for a minute. Uh, number one, thank you for having this meeting, having this forum, and for all the due diligence you've done into this topic. <coughs> I know it's been going on for quite a while. As um, uh, former President Newman said, uh, when I was on the board, we discussed it. Uh, but one thing I wanted to talk about, um, I know I've, I've heard a number of the speakers talk about uh, headcount and, and not being safe and not having enough numbers. Um, one thing I would love to have you consider as you consider this proposal is to revisit um, something I had looked at when I was public safety chair, is the idea of a combination fire department to supplement <coughs> the paid career fire departments with volunteers. Just a quick Google search, you know, it's um, actually, take that back. I did a quick search and found an old article that covered this topic back in 2009 when it was discussed. And uh, my quote then was that only 50 departments in the entire state are 100% career fire departments. Some are 100% volunteer and a large number are combination, a com are combination of fire departments, combination of paid and career. And just a quick Google search while I was sitting there, Madison, Vineland, Edison, Robbinsville, Willingboro, Morris Township, Stone Harbor, Lakewood, Jackson, Morristown all have combination fire departments. Small towns, large towns, North Jersey, South Jersey, all over the state. <clears throat> so again, I fully support the proposal that you're doing, but if there are concerns about headcount, I think uh, opening it up to volunteers is a great way to sort of address uh, some of the concerns that you're hearing and accomplish the cost savings that you're all uh, looking to bring that we would all appreciate as taxpayers. As you've said, our taxes are insane, and I do appreciate all the work you're doing uh, to alleviate that. So that was all I had to say. Thank you again for your hard work and for having this forum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Next speaker, please. Good evening, my Good evening. name is Brad Hobbs. I'm here tonight because I live at Two Brookwood Road and I want to make my point through two stories. The first is at Two Brookwood Road, within the first year when we moved in, the brook behind my home overflowed. If it wasn't for the fire department that came when we called, my house would be gone. In the time since then, I have become on a first name basis with most of the people in the fire truck group and the Department of Public Works. I bring this up because of a specific point. We talk about numbers, but we're playing numbers in a box. And I challenge you to think of the whole budget in innovate. We're a post-pandemic, throw it all away. Digital transformation is here. We're thinking- Mr. Hobbs, I just got a notice that residents at home watching on TV can't hear you, so maybe sure. if you can just get the mic a little closer so, so they can I'll hear you. So I'll get closer you. to it. Thank I you. I live at Two Brookwood Road. In 1998 or 97, the brook overflowed, tore all three garage doors off of my house. Almost took the entire structure. We didn't even have the fire component that we had now. And they were racing up and down North Wyoming. I'm on the far edge of the town right at the border between Ludington, South Orange, and Wyoming. Now you tell me as a member in town, I understand all of this technically from a consulting standpoint. The reality is when I pick up the phone, I don't have time. And what I hear is essentially the following. You're taking what would be an incremental trash payment that I might make spread across all of the homes between Maplewood and South Orange, and that's what we're debating. An incremental trash piece, instead of the innovation of how do we rethink what we can do and do it differently. The second point, my wife was in a car accident. Teenager ran speeding up the hill, driving in South Orange, T-bones the car, totals the Escalade, the jaws of life have to get her out of the truck. Fire department. 
If it's on the other side of town or shared service, I don't know that I have my wife here today. I also bring up another piece. The economic and generational wealth tied to our fluent communities through home transfer, if someone loses their home, they lose the generational wealth and the income generating engine that they've invested in. That then impacts the intellectual cap capability of what they can pass on to their children and starting and moving forward. All of this is impacted by the decisions you're making, but none of it's being discussed. So I challenge you to do that and do it well and do it better because we're not there right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hobbs. Next speaker. Good evening. Everybody hear me? Good evening. My name is Michael Cummins. I'm a deputy chief with the South Orange Fire Department. Some of you, I say most of you know who I am. I just want to make a few points. Um, I'd like to sort of build on what he was saying about the cost factors. I just have a couple of, uh, just to start off with, I think this whole thing began as a solution in search of a problem, quite frankly. When the solution was, we're going to merge these fire departments, and now we have to hire a consultant, and we have to build our case to tell the people why this has to be done. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't think it's the best way to solve problems. When you came on as mayor, the fire department budget really hadn't increased in about 10 years. It's been pretty static. Here's an interesting uh, fact. In 2011, the salaries and wages paid out, not budgeted, but were actually paid out were 3.562,360. You have to excuse me, I've been having issues with my throat. In 2019, the salary and wages paid out were 3,534,667. So they were actually less in 2019 than 2011. For sure, in the years in between, they did fluctuate a little bit, but they were basically between 3.9, 3.7. So for a department to stay this steady financially doesn't seem to be like the department where we're gonna be looking to cut things and make things unsafe. Um, the reason why that stayed that steady is because of the contracts we negotiated and the things we gave up to make to be able to facilitate our staffing to be at safe levels and to make it easier and more economic for you uh, town managers to provide the necessary staffing. I also hear very often things like, oh, public safety is about half of our tax bill. Public safety is about 39% of your municipal tax bill. So it's less than half of your municipal portion of the tax bill. And as you guys know, and you're quick and correct to point out, the municipal portion of the tax bill is only 25% of your property taxes. The fire department is only about a third of that 39%. Looking at the median taxpayer, what they pay in property taxes, it costs them about $60 a month to fund the fire department. So even if we're gonna talk about a 10% cut in the fire department budget, which is rosy, I echo what President Donnelly said, there is massive problems with these numbers in this report. I don't have the time to get into it now, but we will get into it in front of the DCA, hopefully. A 10% savings is about $6 a month, and there's no way, there's gonna be savings if you did this and you stayed at these awfully no, low numbers, you are gonna eliminate some supervision. There's no question about that. But the real numbers are close to a dollar or two dollars a month. The other thing I'd like to just ask you guys, this is kind of rhetorical. Does anybody here have any expertise in staffing of fire departments? How they should be staffed based on population, geography? Do you guys have any training in that, any background in that? Of what the numbers should be, what the what the low numbers should be, what the high numbers should be, what's adequate, what's not adequate. Does anyone other than Mr. Jennings have any kind of expertise in that? Even um, even Jordan, yeah, I would ask you as well. No. Because literally, no one supports this staffing level. No one. None of the present chiefs, none of the past chiefs, and I have letters voicing their concerns, and I could make those letters available, just like the affidavits that were mentioned before. 
The Division of Fire Safety doesn't support the fire department at this staffing level. The FMBA doesn't support the fire department at this staffing level. And I gotta say, I kinda like big fire departments. I sorta regret joining a small fire department in some ways. Not that I really regret anything about working in this wonderful village. But there is benefits to being in a bigger department. There's different areas you can move into. There's training, there's other uh, types of uh, things you can get involved in. You're gonna be in different houses, different areas, different neighborhoods. So there, it is kind of uh, cool to be in a bigger department. So merging the two departments wouldn't be a bad thing. But when you look at the towns, if you, could, if you wanna look at Montclair and Glen Ridge, that's one fire district. Montclair took over Glen Ridge. The population is very similar. The type of construction is very similar. The socioeconomics are very similar. They have 92 firefighters and they don't provide EMS. You wanna do this with 71 in this town, these two towns. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't see how you could support that. Um, Sometimes I wonder, and I've asked this question at least once before, what, is, what, what I can't see what the real reason is for doing this, because the bang for the buck, like I mentioned before, the monthly savings is, is not there, and I, and I think you guys know that these numbers are not correct. These numbers are boosted as high as possible for, this, for the two departments operating independently, and they're skewed as low as possible with the two departments combining, so the difference seems to be as high as possible, which is in this case 1.6 something million. Um, Deputy Chief Cummins, can you just repeat that point real quick? I didn't capture what you had just said about. Without getting into the exact numbers from the DCA, mm -hmm. they're, they're skewed. They're, in other words, they're as rosy as possible as can possibly be to bolster the argument of merging these two departments. They're, they're skewed as high as they can be for the beginning and as low as they can be for the uh, you know projected 2023 budget with the merged fire department to show the most possible savings. And there's a lot of things left out in that, that report. But again, you know, I have, I guess you've extended my time. I appreciate that. Of but, course. Uh, Continue um, I, on. I, I can't get into it, the, the numbers. I'm not getting into it. I just wanted to hear what, okay. what you were saying about the numbers. So one of the things I think, is this seen as some sort of a linchpin to dissolving South Orange and having it be absorbed by Maplewood? I know that we have some Mr. Brown who I've met before. Mr. Haskins, is it? I've, I've never met, but uh, not just you guys, but I mean, I'd like to pose this question to all the committee men and women and the trustees. Do you guys support uh, dissolving South Orange and just having it be absorbed by Maplewood? Is that where this is going with this merged fire department? Is that just considered a step uh, to become a fait accompli where there, there is no more South Orange Village? Because just like with the larger fire department, I do think there's benefits in being in a larger town. Sometimes there's more amenities, there's different neighborhoods, uh, there's more diversity of housing stock, um, you know, economies of scale. So that's not the worst thing in the world, but I know a lot of people moved to South Orange because it was a village. And uh, if you merge the two towns together, that village is out the window, it's now a city. You have five or six business districts, three train stations, a major university, um, so that's out the window. And I also think, and I kind of touched on it, that's why I brought up with the monthly savings. You know, you can tell me it's $8 a month, I'm gonna say it's four, whatever. It's very minimal. And that kind of uh, uh, picks up on what's, what Mr. Ups was talking about. So, these merging town things, I understand you guys are in a difficult situation. You control only 25% of, of the budget, which is the municipal. The driving cost of property taxes is the schools. Okay, and there's two major reasons why New Jersey has high property taxes and the fire department isn't in either category. One reason is it's an urban state and it costs more money to run urban areas. There's, uh, the roads have to be repaved more often, the sidewalks have to be repaired. Mm -hmm. There's gas and water infrastructure, on and on. It's more expensive to be urban and New Jersey is predominantly urban, it's the most densely populated state. The other driving cost is that we like to have a good school system here in New Jersey. And who wouldn't want to have it? And the school system in New Jersey, unfortunately, is funded almost 100% on the backs of property owners. So you're, you're, you're funding a large expense on a very narrow band of people. And that's why the property taxes are so high. So don't think if you merge the towns, you're gonna see $1,000, $2,000 savings. And I wouldn't even be that excited about cost avoidance in the near future. And I, I direct you to look at Princeton. They were hailed about how great the, it was when they merged the two Princetons, 
And one Princeton was the donut hole and one was the donut. So it made even more sense than South Orange and Maplewood. Princeton is now the eighth highest property taxes in the state. That just came out. Higher than South Orange, higher than Maplewood. I don't believe were, either one was in the top 10. They were always high, but I don't believe they were in the top 10 prior to this, at least not in the, the years immediately prior. So I, 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 let, I uh, encourage people to take a look at that. And they, Princeton, I believe, merged in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. So they compared the five years prior to the 2% property tax caps and the rate of increase to the five years after in 2017, I guess. And they said, oh, look, we're, our property is not rising as much as it was before we merged. Well, of course the property taxes aren't. They weren't right. The whole state has not risen as high as they did prior to the 2% property caps. And if you look at Princeton, their property taxes have increased at a higher average than the New Jersey average rate of increase. So, and I understand you guys want to merge towns and merge, and there's only so much you can do because you only control 25% of the budget. But I just want people to know, don't think you're going to merge the town and your property taxes can go from 19,000 to 16,000 you know, maybe 19, I'm not saying there's no savings, think more like 19,000 to 18,700, something like that. That's realistic. In closing, I just want to say I stand before you guys as an older member of this department. I won't be around long enough for this to really affect me, so I'm speaking from the heart. And with the knowledge of a 25-year veteran and a deputy chief in this department. Over the years, I've been through some pretty hairy situations. I was on the first arriving truck at Seton Hall as a young firefighter. And I just implore the people of Maplewood and South Orange to not support this plan in its current form and put your health safety and our health and safety in jeopardy to save, you know, $6 a month. And I thank you guys for giving me the time. Thank you. Deputy Chief, I'm going to have to embarrass you. Just come back. Just come on back. Your first uh, South Orange firefighter to address the board. So on behalf of the South Orange Board of Trustees, I do remember the night that we uh, promoted you outside of this. You have served our community very well. It, it has been a honor. pleasure working with you. Um, you are very well respected without, throughout our community. Obviously, I listen to you on the radio all the time. And so outside of this, I, I just want to extend our gratitude for your service to our community that you've done admirably. And I, I know you've got, well, you know, a, a shorter period of time, um, but for all the years that you've been here, we appreciate you. I really appreciate that, too. And I'd just like to say what I said the day you guys promoted me. I went around and told everybody that it was an honor, and it was. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Any other speakers? Okay. So I'm going to close the public comment period. Um, so there are, I, I think, some of these questions that we can address. And again, this is one community meeting. There is no formal action being taken by the governing body. Uh, Mr. Jennings had issued his report to the governing body a little bit, uh, roughly six weeks ago. Um, and then we distributed it to our local unions. We posted it to our website. It was shared. And then we gave everybody about a month to process what was in it. And we want to have this community meeting as soon as possible, not just for the people who could attend in person, but obviously the ones who are going to view at home to absorb some of these things. So we are continuing this conversation. Like I said, there is no action that is being taken tonight. And we're going to hope to work in good faith uh, with members of our locals and the state FMBA and certainly with each other as we move through this process. Um, so I'm going to now, um, Mayor Frank, if it's okay with you, I don't think we have follow-up questions, but perhaps we can go around and get any comments from our colleagues, and then uh, we can move to adjournment and uh, hopefully see everybody in the upcoming weeks as we continue to discuss this. Uh, so, Mayor Frank, are you good with that? I am Vice President, uh, and may I yield the floor to my colleagues? Absolutely. I'd like to start uh, to my far left uh, with Committee Woman Nancy Adams. She's oh, answer the little girls. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll go to my far right, uh, Deputy Mayor Dean Davis. I have no comment at this moment, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. I will now yield the floor to my colleague, Committee Man Greg Limbrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can everyone hear me? It's usually not a problem for me. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for coming out tonight, members of the public, um, members of the South Orange and Maplewood Fire Department, uh, Mr. Jennings, Mr. Glatt, Mr. Platt, um, 
and also to all my colleagues. Uh, as several people have noted, you know, this has been a multi-year uh, process. Uh, I've been very proud to be part of this process. Uh, and I'll, I'll say, uh, you know, as I prepare to leave office at the end of this year, uh, you know, this is one of the things that, uh, you know, that I remember uh, campaigning on, you know, and this, that was back in 2015. And, you know, I'll, I'll confess here that the reason that I campaigned for it and I thought it was a good idea uh, was cost savings, was thinking about property taxes. Uh, I really wasn't thinking about safety and, you know, and, you know my goal was just, you know, let's, let's not compromise safety. Let's keep everyone as safe. I wasn't thinking about making our residents or our firefighters more safe. Um, you know, then I, I've had the privilege over the course of my public service uh, to be on the Public Safety Committee and to chair the Public Safety Committee now uh, for the last four and a half years. And I've gotten the chance to, to really know uh, on a personal level uh, a lot of the firefighters in our department. I've had a chance to, to sit in our firehouses uh, with our guys uh, and get to know them. Uh, and not just talking about, you know, town business, really get to know them on a personal level. And, um, you know, and I, I've talked about also with them about, about this process. And, um, and I've asked them about, you know, about this. And, you know, as, as those relationships have developed, uh, it's become more of a priority uh, for me personally and I'll admit it should have been all along, but it really became a priority in getting to know people personally that we need, you know, as part of this process, we need to make things safer for our firefighters and our residents. If there's a way to do that, frankly, and, and I, I expressed this to Village President Collum and Mayor McGeehy and some others, even if we don't save as much money, I'm willing to, uh, to compromise some of that cost savings but we, we need to do what we can to make our firefighters safer and to make our residents safer. And, and I think that the plan that we have come up with um, is, you know, is not perfect in either respect. Uh, it does not save as much money, as has been pointed out tonight, as might be possible. Uh, you know, this isn't going to allow us to start, you know, refund, you know, it's giving people tax refunds. Uh, this is really about cost avoidance, but this is going to allow us to save significant money. Uh, and this isn't going to give us a massive department. Where this isn't gonna, we're not going to be adding a lot of firefighters here. We're going to be keeping the firefighters uh, we have and having more firefighters respond to the scene. Um, but if we go from having, you know, six to eight firefighters on a response or eight to ten in Maplewood versus six to eight in South Orange, and now we have 14 to 17. Or, you know, even if there's two out on ambulance call and that drops down to 12, as one of the speakers tonight suggested, that's still more that are responding. And as I've sat across uh, the table, you know, having coffee, having coffee, you know, having coffee, having donuts with, uh, with some of our firefighters, and we've talked about these issues, um, you know, at the end of the day, that's where we've landed is you know, this isn't perfect, but this does make sense. It does make our firefighters and our residents safer. And what really has frustrated me personally, and maybe it's the reason why I'm, I'm you know, there was always going to be a limited, you know, ceiling for me in politics and a limited amount of time I could do it, uh, is because I do take it personally. When, when people come after me and come after my colleagues on a personal level and say that we are doing things to risk the safety of our neighbors or to risk the safety of our firefighters and to put people's lives in jeopardy. And it, it didn't surprise me tonight because I've seen it before but it did disappoint me to see that even after the way our community has responded over the last couple of years, to see the way that the state FMBA 
continues to come into this community and spread fear and misinformation and to give false facts and to say, oh, we're throwing our, ro our weight around down in Trenton and we're calling the lieutenant governor and we're telling her where to send staff and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. I mean, come on. We're, at, we're all adults here. We're trying to make adult decisions for this community. We're not trying to play politics. We're trying to keep our residents safer. And if you're telling me that I would do something that's going to make the firefighters of this community or the residents of this community less safe, you're wrong. That's offensive and you're wrong, and the residents of this community don't believe you. I'm going to support this. It's not a perfect plan. It's a good plan. And I agree with Mr. DeLuca. We cannot let this opportunity pass us by. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Limerick. Um, after speaking with my colleague, Ms. Adams, I'm going to yield the floor back to you, uh, Chair, Ch um, President. Fantastic. Okay, so um, we are going to start with the South Orange side. I think I will um, first start with uh, my colleagues who were just recently appointed to our Joint Exploratory Committee. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Trustee Brown was elected in May of uh, 2021, I'm getting my dates confused now. Uh, Trustee Collier was elected in May of 2019, but both of them are new members um, to this joint working group that we've had up and running since 2017. So um, why don't I start with you, Trustee Collier, and then I will go to Trustee Brown. And just make sure you also speak into the microphone. Thank you. I'm not sure I could follow. Um, Mr. Lembrick, um, but I will echo some of his comments. Um, thank you uh, for all of you in the community for coming and sharing your thoughts on this topic. Thank you for our, um, our, uh, our, our local firefighters who've come to share their interest in this topic as well. Um, I will, um, I too will go back to campaigning. Um, I, uh, as I was campaigning on this topic, um, I hadn't had uh, the background, all the numbers, all the reports. Um, I hadn't had material that, uh, you know, that uh, gave me the deep dive that I typically need to get comfortable on a topic. Um, but I knew when I was campaigning that um, the first priority was safety. Um, certainly, we need our residents and our firefighters to stay safe and um, if possible to, to be safer. Um, and, and the second priority being, um, being savings. You know, we've heard a lot of statistics about our high property tax state. We've heard a lot of um, theory about why that situation exists. Um, there are all kinds of reasons for that when you look at the big picture and you go look at the state money flow um, that doesn't absolve us of our responsibility for looking at the financial picture on a local level and doing what we can to chip away at the problem. It's a big problem. So, um, you know, in summary, I look at the following. We have six to eight people in South Orange that respond to a fire today. We will go to 14 to 17. That six to eight includes um, mutual aid happens, um, I think it might have happened five times that we requested mutual aid in the last year. And of course, we do go out on mutual aid and support other communities. In Maplewood, there are eight to 10 personnel that go out and serve a fire or a service call, um, depending on the level of the urgency. That number goes to 14 to 17. And again, in Maplewood today, they have EMS calls, and those eight to 10 people are serving those EMS calls as well. Point being that no matter how you look at these numbers, we are getting more people out on a call 
regardless of whether we live in South Orange or Maplewood, and those firefighters are going out on a call with more of their colleagues, regardless of whether they're from Maplewood or South Orange. I don't know how you, I don't know how you tell me that's not safer. So that's my number one priority from my campaign. And my number two priority deals with the numbers that the DCA put together for us. So I too am supporting uh, the program. I'm, uh, you know, I've got questions on some of the details. Not everything is hammered out. We've talked about um, that we have more conversations to have with our union representatives. We are not going to do this without having those conversations. Um, I look forward to those conversations. And um, you know, I, I'm fully supportive of moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Collier. Uh, Trustee Brown. Thank you, Madam President. As I uh, sit and listen to all of the very insightful input, the comments, the questions, I come to this as objective as possible because I did not run on a campaign that was particular one way or another about the merger. I, in my first attempt, did run during a very politicized, <laughs> should I say, uh, moment related to this merger. But I was neutral. I come to it hearing, as Mr. Lindbergh said, just how personal it felt for him to hear from our state FMBA representatives some of the things that, that they said uh, this evening. I also come to it hearing how personal um, the experiences with our fire department are for residents like Mr. Hobbs, for our wonderful firefighters like our deputy chief. And I also have my own personal experiences with it. I, I think the deputy chief and I met recently, like last week when a neighbor called the fire department. And when I saw fire trucks, because my fire, those particular neighbors happened to be on the, uh, I'm not gonna say older. Yeah, they are older, they're older. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta get away with that. <laughs> but when I saw lights at 11 something at night, I went out to check on my neighbors. And I was met by some wonderful firefighters that were there to check on my neighbors. And the personal aspects of this make it very difficult because change in itself is very difficult, but, but then you add the personal nature of this, it makes it so difficult. Coming to it from an objective standpoint, coming late to the party, if you will, and hearing all of the research that has been done, hearing all the work that has been done, the 20 years of input, uh, hearing from uh, some of our elected officials of past, I can only say that the, the work that has been done as a newly elected trustee, I'll continue to read every single sentence that's ever been written about this. I look forward to the input in the meeting with the DCA. I know that <laughs> wherever this settles, not everyone's gonna be happy. And that tends to be a good thing when everyone seems to be not all the way happy. Um, but I, I promise to remain objective. I promise to remain connected to that personal aspect of what this means for everyone. And I say that because there has to be a decision. <laughs> we have to make a decision. If we sit here and remain indecisive 20 years from now, we'll, we'll still be talking about the potential merger. Um, but I also promise, like I said, to remain objective, to be fair, uh, to hear if, if the number is, is not 71, then what is the number? And, and But looking at what I've read so far, hearing the analysis, and I wouldn't call them imaginary numbers. I, I happen to have experienced the world of finance, and, and in every model, there are assumptions. We don't call those imaginary numbers. There has to be some rationale based on the assumptions. I'm looking forward to hearing from the FMBA uh, in that meeting with the DCA why those assumptions are being questioned. Um, 
And again, I, I, I get right back to the remaining objective. I'm committed to making sure that we come up with the best solution to make everyone safer. Because there is a personal aspect, too, to the cost avoidance, because I, too, have to pay those quarterly tax bills. <laughs> so there's a personal nature to that. But it pales in comparison to making sure our residents are safe, like my neighbors, and that our wonderful firefighters are safe. So as a newly elected um, trustee, you have my commitment to make sure that I'm objective in my stance, but also um, that I take it personal and make sure we make the right decision for our wonderful village, the residents and our firefighters. Thank you very much, Trustee Brown. Welcome to the big show, huh? <laughs> um, uh, trustee Hilton. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Madam President. I have no further comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trustee Haskins. Um, thank you, Village President. Um, I am, as pointed out, I'm a newly elected trustee as well. Um, and I would just like to thank all my colleagues up here for all the work they've put in over the last 20 plus years on this. Um, it's, um, it's been a really incredible journey. And then thank them also as a new trustee and also as a candidate. Um, a lot of people went out of their way to help me learn a lot about this process. Um, the Manitou report, reading the old one, reading the new one from Dr. Jennings um, was very enlightening. Um, and, then, uh, and then getting comments today from uh, former elected officials in South Orange, residents of South Orange, and then also the state FMBA and, uh, and our deputy chief was, uh, was, was really helpful. And uh, it's, um, you know, so much work's been put into this. Um, I'm excited to contribute to the next steps of, of, of making this go forward. Um, and to keep having those conversations, even when they're tough conversations. Um, I, uh, I'll echo uh, Trustee Brown, which um, I'll stay objective, and I'll keep thinking about it, um, and, um, and echo um, Councilman Limbrick that, you know, I'm dedicated to everyone's safety as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Haskins, and I'm moving over to the other side, Trustee Jones. Hi, I just want to um, first thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, I was part of the 2019 election, and fire was not on our roadmap. I um, remember that election. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and so I, one, I was on public health and public safety. I want to thank all of our fire department staff that is here, and everyone that is actually part of our fire department. Um, I think fire is very important. And what I learned in the 2019 is that everyone, this, this, um, topic matters to everyone here and when it came out at the time we had people knocking on doors and making some of our residents feel like we were getting rid of the fire department and so when I came on board as a trustee um, and I read through the Manitou report I was shocked because that's not where we were going and it, it went against what some of the fire department people that was not part of our community um, was telling people that were knocking on doors so when you go back to inspiring fear in our residents, I think that's scary. The one thing I want to say is that we had three former trustees speak, as well as one former president. And you want to, if you guys want to know, we all live here. We want everything to be safe. We want fire to be safe. We will not be trustees for life. You know, some of us, like Mr. Limbrick, will be leaving soon. And he is not going to put anything in place that is going to harm his family. He has a beautiful daughter. No one wants anything to not be safe but we do want it to be efficient when you go through the deck and when you guys I'm sure you're going to go through the deck again and you look at some of the inefficiencies that we can work on with South Orange we can actually learn from Maplewood we do not want to become Maplewood <laughs> um, I love being a South Orange resident I tell people I'm a South Orange resident that is not our goal our goal is to be individual but efficient and if there are ways that we can merge and we have the czars here they merge on a lot of things we merge on our schools we might merge on waste we might merge on other things there's different things that we could potentially merge on and this is something that is great it gets us more firefighters at one time um, and you know when you look at the actual numbers um, 
the one thing I do want to say is, Mr. Holmes, I'm glad that your family is safe. The fact that people still think that we're trying to get rid of fire and that there won't be anyone to call is really, really important to know that that is not what any of us are doing. I, once I'm not a trustee, I will call the fire department. I called the fire department before. Even if I was on health and public safety, sometimes they still don't know that I was on health and public safety. They don't know my address, so I will continue to call them. But the one thing I do want to say is um, I want us all to be open to conversation. I think that Dr. Jennings provided his information to F FMBA and said if there are any questions to please give me a call. This has been going on as far as I know for two years and in two years there was not any questions that is being had which means that we are not all ready to sit at the table and have a true discussion and that is something that I am really concerned about. From a um, resident perspective again we are all residents of this community and when I see things on social media where it says we're trying to do this or we're trying to do that I want you to know we are humans and we do want safety in our community and we are not trying to get rid of things arbitrarily just to get rid of them. Um, the 26 percent that is part of municipality, um, 40 percent of it does go to police and fire, that is true, but you do have to recognize that we have to look at the efficiencies that we can do within our community in order to save taxpayers money. That is why we are here. Thank you. Before we close out, um, I just wanted to circle back with Deputy Mayor Daffis, if he, anything else from him or from uh, Committee Woman Adams. Um, if there was anything additional, I just want to make sure everybody had a chance. Are you okay? No, I don't want to drag anything out. I agree with whatever. Okay, what, great. Sorry, and, um, and Committee Man DeLuca? I'm good. All set. So I'll turn it over to you, Mayor McGeehee. Mayor, if, if I could, whenever you're ready. Oh. Short white, um, Mayor, if it's okay, can we yeah. let Mr. Platt, or Platt, I'm sorry, speak? Go ahead. So as the guy who runs around the state going from one contentious meeting to the next, <laughs> you guys are really a model for how it should be done. It's, it's very encouraging to see the conversation. And I also think this is coming from the guy who really believes that there's no greater symbol of man's humanity for man than a fire truck, if you, okay? So it's a very interesting, as long as you guys keep talking the way you are, I think you're gonna get to a good place. I wish mo more towns were as uh, communicative as South Orange and Maplewood. I'm not saying that because I'm a little biased about South Orange, <laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously. So, and again, for both sides, keep the conversation going. Great, thank you very much. Um, Mayor McGeehee. Thank you, Village President. I'm gonna be very brief. Um, I said some remarks in the beginning of the presentation, but I wanna first thank again our firefighters from Maplewood who are here tonight. Uh, I recognize uh, the challenge uh, that, you're, that you're currently experiencing, but I just wanna say thank you and I appreciate your thoughtfulness. Uh, I appreciate your leadership and your collaboration. I also want to recognize our um, Township Administrator Jerry Jimes and our Assistant Administrator uh, Bailey Barnett, who are here this evening as well. Please put your hand up. They are uh, really doing a, an amazing job of helping us run the day to day operations of our Township Committee, and we couldn't do it without you both. So thank you for your service to our community. Um, this is a difficult uh, you know, process, and as we talked about before, it's been happening for an extended period of time. Um, but as I mentioned in my remarks earlier this evening, this is a commencement. A commencement is the beginning of something new and something unique. And collaboration is a key word. I've used it a lot. And we will continue to collaborate. We will agree to disagree. Um, I don't agree with some of the comments that were made this evening about the numbers. I want to recognize that the DCA had a huge part in the numbers that were provided. And unfortunately, they were unable to make it. We found out about that uh, at the last minute. But if I was able to speak for the DCA, I would say that they do support this and that they will hopefully come out in the future and publicly say that. I again want to recognize my colleagues for their dedication to this project through the years. Uh, without them, we could not be here this evening. And finally, I want to thank the residents who came out tonight who are watching, who have provided input, who have asked questions, and come up with ideas. They've been thoughtful. And that's what collaboration is about. This is Maplewood and South Orange. We are a community. There are 565 municipalities in the state of New Jersey, and we are two of them. 
But one thing's for sure, that everyone on this dais knows their community, and we know what we're doing. So thank you. President, I yield the floor. Thank you very much, um, Mayor McGeehee. Um, I'm gonna just echo all the thank yous uh, that went around, and particularly to members of the public who, I mean, this is where excitement happens. For policy wonks, it's like <laughs> Super Bowl. I mean, thank you for coming here tonight. Um, so there were a few things that, that were brought up, and I wanna take, um, not like a cross-examination, I mean, this isn't law and order, but there were some things that were raised that I think I'd like to talk through just a little bit to bring some closure to it, and then we'll continue the conversation. So the one thing about uh, public safety, whether it is police or fire or EMS, is that there's always a balancing act with governments about how safe and what is that risk analysis. Because if you think about it, um, ideally, if you wanted to put a police officer on every street, if you wanted to have a station house in every single neighborhood, if you wanted to make sure that you had an EMS rig um, in each section of town, you will undoubtedly increase public safety for all the people in those areas. And so what is the balance and the risk analysis of being able to do something like that, right? And that's what we're charged with. And that when I say public safety is the most important thing that the municipality does, it is. Right, It's right up there with the Board of Education doing the schooling of our children. This is top priority, right? But it is the most expensive top priorities, and so we have to be very thoughtful about it. The one thing that I want to say about Charles that's a little bit different, and uh, Mr. Wolk uh, had spoke to the NFPA standards. Any professional association, whether it's fire or it's engineering or the way that we look at complete streets, they're always best practices. You want to aspire to be able to get to those things within the budget context. Confines. Now, what Charles brought to us, I'm sorry, Dr. Jennings, which is a part of the reason that we brought him in, is that he used a scalpel. He looked at the demographic profiles of South Orange, but also our building structure, the type of structures that we have, um, the target hazard areas between our commercial districts, between our industrial areas. So it wasn't just a matter of what's your population, divide by number of firefighters, that's your number. Because what we have here is gonna be very different from a rural area or something that is an urban center. And so he brought the complexity of looking at our data and our calls for service and matching that against what he believed and what we share in that belief is optimal staffing, right? And so, and again, none of this happens immediately. It happens through attrition. So it is a goal number to get to. And um, I will be the first one to say that when data changes, we adjust to that data accordingly. Uh, a number does not lock us in indefinitely. You see governments do, redo, undo um, several times to try and meet the needs of uh, the community. I will also note is that we started on the higher end. Um, when Mr. Jennings first came to us, there were several different scenarios, starting with 12 minimums, 13 minimums, 14 minimums. Um, we're not kind of like realtors where you know you, you high ball and you low ball and you try and meet in the middle. We thought it was reasonable to start with the highest base of minimums, which would be 14. So we weren't overly aggressive in trying to re reduce line personnel from any of our apparatus, from any of our headquarters, et cetera. This is basically status quo with some um, movement from the, the top ranks that we have in the department. And so I thought we were very thoughtful about starting with 14 and seeing how we're doing and adjusting accordingly. Now, one really great point that was brought up is you can't compare South Orange and Maplewood to surrounding communities. Very familiar with Montclair, Glen Ridge, also Summit. I mean, there's a lot of different things that are happening. So one of the analyses that I did independently was looking at, okay, so South Orange is Essex County, right? Morris, Union. We have a lot of things that surround us. And, I, and, and just in this analysis is that we have a total of 82 towns. Uh, 24 are fully paid career fire department, seven are combination, and 52 are volunteer. So we're looking at over 70% of towns having volunteer departments. What we do know from the data, though, is that there is less volunteerism. So what we're likely going to see from those departments is move to what Mr. Goldberg said is combination department. But what's interesting about NFPA 1710 standards is that they set standards for paid career fire departments. What about the communities where they don't have paid career fire departments? I wish, and I'm just speaking out loud, is that we did have a statewide framework of what we can all be working with. 
because whether you're paid, your combination, your volunteer safety is safety. And so we do have numbers that are all over the place. In some areas, you have really heavily staffed departments. And in other areas, you have volunteers where literally you're waiting for people to get to a fire station to be able to respond. Or they have agreements with other regionalized services and the response time is even higher. But at least know in South Orange where the number is you know, four minutes for the initial engine is that we are still in an area of where everything that exists today will continue to exist. Automatic aid, I do have to give a shout out to the state FMBA and our locals for bringing that to our attention. That was an interim step to start getting our departments working together. Of course, we would prefer not to just do that alone um, because the cost savings aren't there, right? But we are seeing right now from automatic aid the efficiencies and the backup support, even just having a fast team on an initial alarm with a smoke condition is absolutely amazing to see that level of coordination and it is something that should be celebrated between all fire departments, paid, unpaid, combination, is that firefighters, you continue to show up for each other and that is always going to be a priority. Um, for your health, for your safety, for the residents of any structure, for property, you do it very, very well. Developments, we, hear, we heard about that. South Orange is growing, Maplewood is growing, but one of the things that needs to be clear about the way that we looked at the mapping and the GIS of our calls for services, again, these new developments first, their fire suppression and the building codes are stronger than they've ever been. In fact, I think it's some of the best in the country, but they are already in our target hazard area. So Charles, um, Mr. Jennings, I'm sorry, Dr. Jennings, had already calculated for that. So we are not looking at high mixed use developments in the peaks of Newstead or outside of our commercial corridors, which is, if you look at it, uh, very in close proximity to where our three headquarters are combined. Um, the next thing is that uh, we did hear that without all people, we speak over each other, I, I agree with that. Um, and the input of experts is always gonna be critical. Um, I think that uh, we heard a few things about the staffing, right? Um, and again, and it has to be repeated because we always go to the worst case scenario, right? Especially if, if you're representing the union and elected officials, we tend to look at a best case scenario. And I liked what Trustee Collier said because again, in South Orange, right now, if something happens, you will have between six to eight firefighters that will respond. In Maplewood, you will have eight to 10 firefighters respond combined on a smoke condition especially on a smoke condition, on a signal 11, on a structure fire, is that you will have no less than 14, and hopefully in a best case scenario, 17. But even if, even if Maplewood is on an EMS call and they have two people on their EMS rig going to St. Barnabas, et cetera, even at the lowest number, if we are at 17, that number's still 15, that's bigger than us combined. Even if we were at minimum staffing at 14 and reduced it 12, that's bigger than both towns combined. And through the analysis, we know, we know systematically over six years of data, the very low probability of two structural fires occurring at the same time while EMS is out, which is why I talk about the cost benefit analysis and also risk management. And even in that scenario, and it's something we did not touch on tonight, is play, play out the worst case scenario. God forbid, in Newstead, there is a structural fire going on. In the Hilton Neighborhood Association, there is a smoke condition. We have two people out on EMS. That is why we are built around a mutual aid system, is that is when we rely on our partners from surrounding agencies to be able to support us the way that we support them in their times of need. So we never want residents to feel that if we're at a call, it just means you won't be taken care of. One of the most beautiful things that you see in public safety, whether it's storm conditions, whether it's policing, whether it's fire, et cetera, is this camaraderie and this attempt to focus and triage on target hazards and backfill when need be. And that when we do that, we appreciate it, we do it for other agencies. So the complexities here I think are all well documented and we realize that it is a very complex issue. It is not like the recycling contract we're trying to work out even though it is very important. So we hear you, 
We heard the concerns here. We're going to regroup again. We hope that we have these partnerships moving forward. I am enthusiastic because I heard a good spirit tonight of people who want to continue to collaborate. We're not there yet, but we're at a point where we can share some information with the community, and when we have information, we want to share it. So um, I put on the last slide, again, there's an email address, whether you go to the South Orange or Maplewood websites tomorrow, this video will be uploaded, the presentation will be uploaded, uh, you can email your comments in, maybe we probably got some things from social media, hopefully uh, smiley faces or something, I don't know, I hate those angry emojis, they're just so terrifying. Uh, so we welcome everybody to be part of the conversation and thank you again for coming tonight. Um, anything additional for my colleagues? Okay, so Maplewood, you're actually guests here, so I need one of my, this is where I turn it over to Trustee Jones to do what she does. This might I motion be a to adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you. <laughs> she never even asked for the vote. It just gets done. So thank you all for joining us. This meeting is adjourned.